It's been a beautiful day in Pontiac, Michigan, with the temperature in the springtime 70s. And inside here under the magnificent silver dome in Pontiac, Los Angeles and Michigan are set to go. Michigan has won the toss, and the Panthers have elected to receive. There's uh, Hugh Campbell, a legend in Canada, who won five consecutive great cups at Edmonton and has taken over the reins of the Los Angeles Express. And his coaching opponent here tonight for the Michigan Panthers is Jim Stanley, who cut his coaching teeth on the legendary late Bear Bryant, then coached Oklahoma and then with great success, came here from the Atlanta Falcons where he was a defensive specialist. So Jim Stanley, soft-spoken and very popular, has taken over. Kicking off for Los Angeles, and that means uh, back to the number two, Vince Abbott, first-year player from the University of California Fullerton, will be kicking from uh, the 35-yard line, and deep to receive is uh, number 29, Derek Holloway, a rookie out of the University of Arkansas, who has been spectacular, teaming with Anthony Carter. And while the defense is uh, keyed on Carter, Holloway has been outstanding with 17 catches as a receiver, and he's been the kickoff return man, averaging almost 20 yards a return. Here comes at it, and we're underway as Carter Sweeps over the line. Oh, a little mix-up back there, and the ball is down inside the 10-yard line. Carter was trying to feel the ball, and one of the up backs, John Williams it looked like, went up there and grabbed the ball almost right out of his hand, and so Michigan now will take over. There's how the Panthers have done offensively. They are, we will remind you, a defensive-minded team, but uh, here you'll see they do rank number six in passing, and that uh, means one of the bright and promising young surprises of this U.S. Football League season in his first every year is Bobby Hebert. And he'll bring the Michigan Panthers out of here. Hebert, six foot four, very rangy, a rookie from Northwest Louisiana. Starts off with very poor field position, back in his own seven yard line. The old Miller's in there to give the fullback Lacey, and he is tripped up for a loss of about a yard by Dan Root, inside linebacker who filled well. Well, of course, Williams made a rookie mistake trying to field that initial kickoff. Gave them extremely poor field positions. One of the things that the defense has done for the Los Angeles Express is their great quickness has enabled them to keep in football games. So when they get field position like this, they're looking for three and out and getting that ball inside the 50. Carter comes to the right side, Holloway to the left. Cleo old Miller has started in the backfield with Lacey and to the Williams. And to give us to Miller, a little tap up the right side to the 10. Still tight to about the 11 or 12. Pretty strong run on the inside by Cleo Miller, the veteran who was one of the leading rushers of all time for the Cleveland Browns, and he has given stability here. Well, on the, on the play, the running play, you get the matchup of Wayne Radloff, who played for the Georgia National Champs against his old teammate, Eddie Weaver, who also played for that same team. So they're starting out early to knock heads. They've done it a lot in the past. They didn't get too much out of it that time, but uh, they picked up a few. Third down, about five to go for the 12-yard line. Let's see what Bobby Hebert does here. Key third down play. Michigan has not been too successful on third down. Hebert with good protection. Off to one of his backs. He's got it for a first down around the 13-yard, 18-yard line. Ken Lacey out of the backfield circle to the left side. Tyrone Justin hit him out of bounds, but he looked like he made that marker and picked up a first down for Michigan. Let's see if he did, he did. Yes, it is. Well, as Hebert drops back, that's one of the things he has gotten better each ball game. He sees nothing upfield, comes off to Lacey, which is a smart move on his part. Lacey, the number two receiver for this Michigan ball club, picks up the first. Rookie from Tulsa, and you can see at his eyes right on the marker. Aberso hits his first pass of the night, first and ten, at the 18-yard line. Here's a gift to Lacey up the inside, not much doing. Picks his way for a couple of grudging yards around the 22-yard line. That'll bring up second down, about seven yards to go. On the Michigan sideline, Whit Taylor. There's Mark Miller, who's the backup quarterback alongside Jim Stanley. Miller signaling the plays in from the quarterback, Coach Bob Leahy, in the press box from the sidelines, giving him a lot of different signs. Looks like a third base coach or a flag man on top of an aircraft carrier. Second and seven now from 22. Holloway is to the right. Anthony Carter to the left. Bobby Bear fakes on the play action. Bear is going to go deep down the sideline for Holloway, and he's out of bounds. At about 
the Los Angeles 45-yard line. Good pressure put on by Danny Rich, the left outside linebacker, as uh, Bear was going for a big chunk that time. Well, Bear is an excellent long thrower against Oakland in the early part of the season. They took him out when he was having trouble throwing the football. They brought him back in the second half. He was very effective going deep. That time to Holloway, he had him open. He just led him to the outside and a little too long. Last week, Los Angeles sacked John Reeves five times. Let's see what we do here. Obvious passing situation. Third down and seven from the 22. Bear from his 15. The left side for Holloway. Can't hold it. A little bit high. Fourth down and a kicking situation coming from Michigan. Rodney Weber broke it up downfield for the Express. So Eric Scroggins, outside linebacker, was getting pretty good pressure as he was blitzing in that situation. Bear did have ample time. He threw it high and away. They were into the area against the double zone by the two outside safeties, but just threw the ball poorly. Herman Weaver in the punt for Michigan, and back are Mark Colbert and Mike Fox in the double safety setup. There's a good look at Thunderfoot Weaver, University of Tennessee. And the veteran been brought in because Greenwood has been shaken up. There's a kick that might be run back, and it's taken the 45, and a hit it down is the Mark Colbert immediately at the 45-yard line, and that's where they get the ball first and 10 when we come back. field position for the Los Angeles Express. Offensively, there's what they've done this year. They are very good on first down, averaging almost five yards of play, and they protect the ball very well. Robert Haslip is starting a quarterback at place of Harrington. Mike Ray, the quarterback. Play action, Ray to the air for the first down, up the middle. He's got his man, the tight end, and it's grabbed by Haynes, rather, coming across inside the 35-yard line of Michigan. Chris Haynes, the former Notre Dame star, hit by Ron Osborne, the free safety, but Ray went right for the big one at the start time. Well, as uh, Ray drops back to throw, they go with the play action, and of course he gets Haynes, Haynes coming over the middle, has excellent speed, he averages 21 yards to catch, so he's got some good quickness, he knows what to do with it once he gets it. Only twice last week he hit his wide receiver. Here's the delay up the middle to Barnett. John Barnett on the tailback. Flies the middle of the Michigan line. Makes it inside the 30 for a small gain. Ronnie Patch at the left end. Running down. And there is Barnett, a rookie from Oregon Tech. Playing for Hugh Campbell. Great uh, player out of uh, your part of the world, Don Heinrich, when he was at University of Washington. Washington State, Washington State where he right? played. That's kind of a little challenge over that way, but he was certainly a great player in college in the Canadian League. Second half, seven to go. L.A. now in beautiful field position here in the first series. Play action here by Ray. Sideline pattern. And he's got his man over to Kevin Williams. Out of bounds inside the 25. But Fred Logan, the right corner linebacker, but well, Williams made a beautiful pattern that time, and that's a very tough pass to defend if it's thrown right, and he's cut right for the sideline. And one of the things that makes it tough is the fact that they're going with a lot of play action. Talking with Hugh Campbell before the game, he said he wanted to try and slow up the blitzing linebackers. One of the ways that he felt was with the play action. That time they went to Kevin Williams, the, they call him the bug. He ran a 9-400 in college. And of course played at the University of Southern California a few records out there that still stand third and short yardage and they give it up the middle of the fullback has it for the first down on a slant he goes almost to the 21 yard line it'll be first down for los angeles ray bentley an inside linebacker out of central michigan made the stop well as they come off the left side it's just a power play they get a good surge by the offensive line at that point and of course pick up the first down and they're in there deep and threatening first and ten to 20 mike ray's the fourth leading passer in the usfl for over 700 yards, as you can see. Only two interceptions, four touchdown passes. He's drawn the team downfield very well. Now first and ten. Here's Ray. Gives it to his tail back. And up the middle, Barnett with a good opening inside the 15-yard line. Barnett, who hits that hole so quickly, and he's got the starting call in place of Tony Bodie. Now, whether Bodie's injured, we don't know, but... Campbell likes to use both anyway. Well, John Corker is the outside linebacker. As effective as he is, 
it goes to show you that even the good ones will miss tackle. Corker filled in there at 6'6", and as big and rangy and as heavy as he is, he just didn't get the shoulder into it. And it's uh, six, it'll be second down and four. And four ten. Now here's a give in the backfield of Bodie, and something went awry on that one. A good defensive play by Corker. So you fool the big guy once, you don't get away with it again. Well, I think he got a little bit heated up. They had the blitz coming. Corker this time, as he takes the inside on the blitz, defeats the tight end block, closes down and gets some help from the other side, but essentially has got the inside track. He was a great trade as far as Michigan was concerned and the Michigan linebackers it shows you statistically what they have done but they picked up Corker in a trade from the Washington Federals and what a contributor he's been one of the better linebacking crews in the league would you say Don? certainly would third down short yardage and pick it wide here comes Bodie cutting back at the 10 he may or may not have a first down boy that Michigan defense pulls up quickly Pennywell led the way from his inside post and it looked like Bodie had plenty of uh, protection out there and good blocking interference. But it suddenly petered out around the 10-yard line, and it's going to be close, very close. I would say from here he may have missed it by two or three inches. It's going to be fourth and inches and a big decision for Hugh Campbell. Well, it is, but it appears as though he's, well, now he's sending his kicker on. So while he waited for a moment, he now decides we're down in there. I want to get the point. Hugh Campbell, a 77% winner in his six years in the CFL and 91% in the playoffs. So he knows when the when the points down. 11 out of 12 in playoffs. He won 81 and lost only 22. And the kick down. There's Fitz Abbott, and he's got it up and through from the 15, a 25-yard field goal for Abbott. And Los Angeles takes the first lead, three to nothing. yard field goal by Ben Abbott, first year player out of University of California, Fullerton. And uh, there he is, number two, has given Los Angeles the visiting team here. The lead at 8.31 to go in the first quarter by the score of three to nothing. Back deep uh, four, the Michigan uh, team. There's a change. And uh, this will be taken half the goal line by Holloway up to 15, the 20, and he has spun down the short of the 25 yard line. Around the 22 by Tony Bodie. A tailback. There's the scoring drive. 44 yards in just seven plays. The first big one was the first pass of the game by Mike Ray, which he connects over the middle to Chris Haynes, and that got the express off and rolling. And it never slowed down, going right down to the field goal by Abbott. Poor field positions uh, by Michigan cost them on their opening kickoff, Don. Well, it really did. It's important that they draw first blood from Hugh Campbell's standpoint. They had a short week playing Monday night, so he wants to get out on top early. Bear has Anthony Carter to the left and Holloway to the right. And he gets to Cleo Miller on the sweep, trying to cut back. Look at the blockers are not there. He is upended around the 23-yard line. Very small game. Mike Fox with a spectacular game for Los Angeles at Tampa Bay. Another big one on that one. Well, as they're sweeping from their right to left, pulling the guards coming around, Fox, the free safety, he fills it in a hurry, just exactly the way either a safety or a corner should do, depending on who has the force. He gets penetration, tears it up, makes the tackle before it can get started. Gain of only a yard, second down and nine now for Michigan. At their 22-yard line. A ball's going to have to go to the air. A bear over the middle of his tight end. Look out, might be intercepted. And it is around the 35 by Alvin Burleson. The strong safety made a great catch just off the carpet here at the Silver Dome and Connie Gers Burleson, outstanding defensive leader for this team from the University of Washington. Watch him, Don. An ex-Husky as he comes across with the ball being deflected. Should have been caught. There was absolutely no reason that ball wasn't caught. Burleson, very alert. A big star up in the Canadian Football League. He uh, had been up there for six years and was on the All-Stars for four of those years. There's an indication why. He's the leading tackler on that ball club. Does Ray hit him down that one? He's got him down? He does if he can. Look for the long one. Here comes Williams in motion. Here comes Ray rolling. Ray going for the sidelines, and it's right through Williams' hand at the 30-yard line. Oh, now they're going to call. Oops. Oh, I saw, I saw a flag. It was their flag. 
No, I think it's going to come back. Incomplete pass. It'll be second down and ten. Well, Hugh Campbell sticking with his game plan as they went play action again. Ray rolling out from that point after the fake going up the middle, holding the linebackers to the inside, wanting to get away from that pressure with the quarterback by rolling him out. He gives them a better field of vision. That time, Ray just a little bit over-enthusiastic. He fired it in there a little hard. Should have been caught, but a tough catch to get when it's coming at you. And it's touched by Burleson. Was his second of the year. Now they bring the tight end Ellis back in motion. Now here's a drop play to Harrington, and he's not fooled. Michigan defense was there by Ray Bentley, the great inside linebacker from Central Michigan, number 50, and he smelled that play immediately. Take a draw, and then a draw to Harrington on the delay. Watch. Well, this time with, with Ray going back on the draw, they jam it up with a stunt to the inside to slant it. Bentley, the most valuable defensive player in that Mid-American Conference, leads his club with 74 tackles. Don Ray really didn't carry out a very good fake there, did he? Well, he didn't have much chance. The penetration was coming. Here comes Ray again. Good rush put on by Michigan, and he's got it complete down here. It is caught by Tony Bode of the backfield, and he is driven out of bounds. Lee Oliver Davis, the flag is dropped. Penalty flag down, and they may have an eligible receiver downfield. Now they got holding on the offense. Referee Bill Parkinson has the call. That'll cost the express. They were off and rolling again. There's Hugh Campbell at the sidelines, and here's Mike Ray head down a little bit. But he's called an excellent first quarter so far. Of course, he's had excellent field position. How important is that for quarterback? Well, it's uh, the name of the game when it's all said and done. Burleson setting up this drive initially with the interception. Number 65 on the offense. Go down. That was Wayne Jones, who, as you and I know, Don, got a very 11th hour call to start at right guard. Well, he did. Mike Durrett had a sore shoulder and was unable to start in that position, so they went with Jones. Jones guilty of holding. All right, they got a fifth defensive back in now for Michigan. Six defensive backs in. They're looking for the pass from Ray. Ray dropped him off. Rushes off, and he dumps it off, and they may call grounding. Why the heat was on Ray that time. Padgett was coming hard. So was Tipton from nose guard. Tipton might have been the first to get to him, and, and Padgett was also back there from left end. And they've got intentional grounding on Ray. That was a big, big defensive play by Michigan. Well, it was, and that's, of course, what this Michigan club does so effectively. They're very aggressive in their pass rush. Ray has nowhere to go with it. He figures that he can try and dump it off. They did have a couple receivers in that area, even though he was throwing the football away. But an opportunity with the interception now has turned into a punting situation. It'll be fourth down and 36 yards to go. In is Jeff Partridge, another rookie out of the University of Washington. Where all those Huskies come from? <laughs> well, he can boot it. Here's Partridge. Oh, booming kick. Backing up here is Anthony Carter. He's got it inside the 20. Carter look at the room. He's one block. Cannot get it. Over the 25, out of bounds on the 28-yard line. And so Michigan gets it again. Back in the hole, trailing 3-0. The big items of that game Monday night will be can Herschel Walker break his tie with Kelvin Bryant for the USFL rushing league. Unbelievably, they're tied right down to the yard, 713 yards apiece, and they come from pretty well the same part of the country. Walker from Georgia and Bryant from North Carolina. Well, I saw Bryant for the first time last week when Philadelphia played Oakland, and he had, a, I believe it was 118 yards, had a sensational day. Walker turned right around. He had a sensational day, and it's amazing that the two of them are tied for the rush league with the same numbers. Well, we'll see Herschel on Monday night with uh, Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. They take on George Allen and company. Wash. Now here's Michigan trying to get something started. First down after the final return, the 28th play action take. Over the middle, Azar hits Carter. Over the 40 to the 45. Up to the 47 yard line. Anthony Carter brings this crowd to his feet here at Pontiac, Michigan in the first period with his team printing 3 0. There's what the little guy can do. I'll whip it. Well, there's a lot of people here have been waiting for Carter to explode like he did 
at Michigan. He is just now, Coach Stanley feels, learning to run the routes the way he should. That time with the play action, all he did was run a kind of a quick post move. He had to gear back a little, but 161 pounds showed some guts going inside. Artists to the right, Holloway to the left. First down play, they run a draw play to the tail back Lacey. Lacey, a big ripping yardage all the way down to the Los Angeles 36 yard line. Ken Lacey on a fullback delay. Another big game by Michigan. Well, it was a draw. They changed up this time. They did not draw trap it, but Lacey, a steady back for them, didn't sign till the middle of training camp. Got a big hole in there. Tyrone McGriff, who joined them late, has come on. Initially, he had a muscle pull, was not able to contribute. Last week, he did an excellent job. Jim Stanley feels he is the best trapper he has ever seen. That time, they opened a big hole in the middle. Michigan has caught a spark now, keyed by the great defensive play a few minutes ago. Down on the first time in Los Angeles territory, Hebert stands in there, sideline pattern, and is caught over here by Lacey, out of the backfield on the 31. That'll be a gain of about six yards. Danny Rich, the last side linebacker, makes the stop for the express. Well, there again, showing that Bobby Hebert is maturing. As he looked upfield, did not see anything. Once again, as he came off to Lacey, had a pretty good position to pick up some more yards had he not stepped out of bounds, lost his, lost his direction on that sideline. A bear out of Northwest Louisiana State that produced Joe Delaney, the great running back at Kansas City, and Joe Ferguson, the quarterback from Buffalo. Good program. Five yard game, second and five for Michigan. Now the handoff to Lacey, again a big hole. And he hits it down to 26, and it's very close, and I believe it is another first down for Michigan. Stop was made by Eric Scoggin, another fine linebacker for Los Angeles. Well, once again, as they come inside, Wayne Radloff, the <laughs> Georgia Bulldog, working against his old teammate, Eddie Weaver. He wins the battle this trip, it appears, although the officials are now going to ask for a measurement. They rolled Weaver up a little. They doubled him. He got a little bit of help to drive him back. Got a nice little bit of daylight there. It appears as though they will have the first. That is first down. Jim Stanley has pulled his wide receivers and sent in two tight ends. And now he's going to send his fly boys back in. Carter and Holloway jog back on the turf now. And he takes Eccles back out of there. Well, a week ago, Michigan beat Chicago. They had their best offensive day. They went for 320 yards against the George Allen defensive club, a defensive-oriented club. So they're picking up where they left off. They're mixing the plays nicely. They're moving it as well on the ground. A bear in striking range now has Carter over the right on Wyman Henderson. Let's see what he has in mind. They're showing double coverage on Carter. And here he comes rolling. He's throwing to Carter. He's got it at the five. Touchdown. You can see there, Hebert throwing it absolutely perfect. And this crowd loves it as one of the local favorites gets six on the board. Jim Stanley said he felt that they could take advantage of that double zone. They were going to try and hit those outside receivers in the crack. Terrific drive finished by a nice pass. Now here's the point after kick. And it's perfect by Boyovic. And Anthony Carter catches with Michigan in the lead. 7-3 to three in the first quarter. will be out back at the 16-yard line. If he lets that ball go, Don, I believe it goes out of bounds, and we'll get a penalty. Well, if he reached out in order to get to the ball, now the officials drop the flag. You know, it's interesting looking at Vajovic. I think the ruling will be that it was out of bounds. I would say that it, it probably is, as the clubs are changing, but as the camera was on Vajovic there, it's kind of interesting because his name... Illegal kickoff, out of bounds, and the kicking team. His name has been pronounced any number of ways, and as you know, Jim, we were sitting in Mike Keller, the assistant general manager and charge of the scouting. He said, let's get this straight once and for all, and called him at home, and Bojovic 
said, that's the way I like it for now. Boyovic, Count Novo. They say he wears garlic in his socks just to keep away the bad luck. You know, Mike Keller has really done a great job as an administrator here. They've signed more players for this Michigan club than any other club in the USFL between their draft choice and territorial players. And uh, while they're an extremely young club, both of these teams are, for that matter, this Michigan team has come on, and as you indicated earlier, with two straight, they're pumped up. Well, Mike Keller's a brilliant young football mind. Great kick this time for Boyovich. Back in front at the five. 20, 25, and down on the 28-yard line. Pretty good run back by John Barnett, stopped by Fred Logan of Michigan. And Los Angeles now, probably with its worst field position of the game, will take over at its own 28-yard line. There's the scoring drive by Michigan. Cap by the 26-yard pass play. A bear to Carter went 72 yards in just five plays. Carter had a hand in just about all of it in two minutes. And Michigan now has moved out on top and scored seven to three. We're in the final four and a half minutes of the first quarter from the Silver Dome in Pontiac. And on Monday, it'll be Herschel Walker against George Allen. Well, don't miss that one. New Jersey and Chicago. Here's another delay. And again, the Brody coming to the left side. Wasn't fooled again. That Michigan defense has really been stirred up. David Greenwood, the number one draft pick, who's back off an injury, was then the key that does defensive play for the uh, Panthers. Well, Bodie wanted to go off the right side. There was nothing there. He veered it back all the way to the other side, and David Greenwood stepped up to fill it. He hasn't played the last couple games. He had a sore right knee. He also was their regular punter, but because of that, they have not allowed him to punt. This is his first game back, and he's anxious, and he proved it right there. Game only three. Ellis now puts his tight end to the right side, and the inside handoff to Barnett. He tries for room, has to pick his way for about three or four yards, gets over the 35. Ronnie Padgett hits him down right there for Michigan at the 36, about two, three yards short of the first down, and he's third down and three. You know, two contrasting styles in coaching staff for the most part. Jim Stanley prefers to have the plays called for his young quarterback, Bear, while Hugh Campbell will send in some plays, basically likes to have his quarterback call their own. There's Hugh Campbell. They call it Bluey Huey. In his days at Saskatchewan, he's a great player in Canada. Here's a big play for team. Third and three. They give it to Booty over the top of the first down, I think. Let's see. It's very close. Ray Bentley came submarining underneath, and Booty tried to go over the top. He needs to get to the 39. The, the ever-present Ray Bentley, as he reads it in a hurry, steps right up in between the guard and the tackle, doesn't make a clean tackle, but gets a pretty good piece of him as they're bringing the ball out to measure it. You know, Tony Bodie is, is quite an interesting guy, too. You know, when you look at him, his first game was against the Los Angeles Express. He had 77 yards, and that one, more yards than Herschel Walker. And it appears as though he made it going to be a first down. But he made more, more yards than Walker did, and talking with their people, he didn't really know how to handle the press. Having played at Montana, he hadn't been used to that type of, uh, of uh, people asking him questions. He was very nervous, but he settled down. He's a very steady back. I think he's probably been helped by Anthony Davis more than anybody else on the Los Angeles team. First down play now for Mike Gray. Here's Ray going to the sidelines on the quick one, and he hit Haynes over there around the 45. Chapman takes him over the sidelines of the 46, and it'll be a pretty good game for Los Angeles. About seven yards on the play, second down and three coming up. Chapman playing a little bit soft on that side, so Ray, the veteran that he is, probably automatic to the quick out at that point. And you got to respect Haynes. He's got 97 speed in the 100. He was uh, the top 60 track man when he was at Notre Dame, so Chapman's going to have to crowd him a little bit more. Challenging the Michigan defense again. Here's a quick pitch back to Barnett. Barnett cracks through. He's got some running with the 40. 35. Needs one block. At the 20. Foot race. Inside the 15 to the 10. Mr. Hayes, a great block. Bringing loose the speedy John Barnett. Only Chapman had a chance to catch him, and he just did it the last moment at the 10-yard line. Brilliant run by Barnett. Well, it really was in good blocking as Barnett, who led the nation in NAI Small Division One, cuts back to the inside. Then he breaks behind the tackle, 
forces a miss over there by Ron Osborne. Now he almost stumbles, losing his footing, but gets run down by the defensive secondary. An excellent run on his part. In college, at Little Oregon Tech, he averaged 161 yards per game. From a little better angle, you can see him get a crack there, then he cuts back, makes a good move cutting back, gets some blocking out in front of it by the tight end. Ah, uh, here's a flag thrown. They're going to call interference. Mr. Hayes, the intended receiver, and Chapman was down there interfering around the goal line. So on first and ten, just outside the Michigan ten-yard line, Ray goes to Hayes, and it looks like they've caught Chapman's interference. So that could be uh, half the distance, and it'll be an automatic first down. That'll be about the five-yard line. Yeah, in the USFL, pass interference, just normal pass interference. Well, let's listen. Pass interference, number 22 on the defense, first down. That was Chapman, but pass interference the USFL is not at the spot necessarily. Ordinary pass interference is made from the line of scrimmage with an automatic first down, normally 15 yards, but inside the 15 is half the distance. Only intentional or deliberate pass interference will give you the ball at the spot, and then flagrant is at the spot plus. First and goal. They give it up the middle to the fullback. And inside the five-yard line, maybe to, to about the three or two, goes Haslip. Stacked up there the middle of the line. Ronnie Padgett off the bottom is the first man. Also in there was Pennywell and Bentley. So it'll be second and goal for Los Angeles. And an exciting first quarter here. We have one minute to go. The Express broke on top 3-0. Michigan came right back, sparked by a great defensive series. And on the passing of A. Bear to Carter, went in to take the lead 7-3, which it is now. And now here's Los Angeles trying to get back the lead. Second and goal. They pitch it again. And here comes Hazlitt. And he will know. It is Cody, and he's in there and scores. Touchdown for Bodie. Just made it past the flag. Ron Osborne tried to get over and get him out of bounds, but he missed. And Bodie smells a dirt. And L.A. leads again. A good job by Bodie smelling that goal line. He gets an excellent block out in front of it. A tackle that just almost gets him in the backfield, but the fans did not <laughs> like it. They I don't know. <laughs> board the replay the fans let you know whether they thought he was in it did not appear that that ball crossed the plane of the goal line i gotta go with you i don't think the ball was there at all maybe one foot but it's gotta be the ball that's it he uh, tried michigan. to get that foot there but not the ball michigan really rather foot doesn't mean much does it don well <laughs> it's gonna stand as it turns out bodie knows the offense ball start bodie kn knows what it means to score he led the conference with it well, let's watch again. 80 points angle. as he goes wide. You see the miss in the block up in front of it. And then that angle, a block tackle with Ron Osborne coming across. He was normally the starting cornerback, but due to some injuries, he's now at free safety. They juggled that secondary. He was, a well, you could say a step late because they gave him the six points. But actually, he got there and kept him out of the end zone. Well, uh, Tony Vettieri, the line judge, was right on top of play. Five-yard penalty. Abbott now will have to kick the point after from the 15-yard line. Piece of cake. Gets a extra point, and so it's 10 to 7. Los Angeles back in the lead. They're still booing a call made on this play, which was ruled a touchdown. Don? Look at the block by Wilbur Haslip right there as he cuts down the defensive back, and then good balance by Bodie as he stays on his feet. But I have to say, at least from the angle that we're looking at it, and the official has a better position, it did not appear like that ball crossed the goal line. But it doesn't matter. They're ahead 10-7. 10-7 Los Angeles. Now here comes the kickoff again. Back deep from Michigan. Here's Holloway. At the 4. The 10. Holloway from the sideline. The 20. At the 25. Out of bounds. And there Michigan will take over first and 10. 26 seconds to go in the first period. There's the scoring drive, 71 yards. So Michigan went 72, Los Angeles come right back 71 yards in just six plays, less than four minutes, and Bodie carried the final two yards on the sweep. Well, two clubs that uh, really have done well defensively are getting off 
a relatively poor start here as both clubs have put some points on the board. Derek Holloway, the smallest ball player drafted by Michigan at 5'7 and a half, 166 pounds. And was he quick returning that kickoff? Now Adair has goes back to work at his own 24 first and 10. Goes the backfield with Lacey. Uh, give it to Lacey. Lacey a little bit of a delay. Running Lavery at the 30. Gets the gain and bumps over the bounds at the 33. Stopping the clock with 19 seconds to go in the period. Mike Fox on the defensive play. Good job by Lacey. They saw nothing in the middle. They had the draw that he would have teed the center or the guard to make his move. There was nothing there, so he took it to the outside. Then as he was moving in that direction, he used the old stiff arm on... Dan Lutz, the linebacker, and picked up a couple more. Nice game. Eight-yard game. Second down and two for Michigan. Down the final few plays left in the first quarter. Then an exciting scoring period. The defenses have not dominated. Give us to Cleo Miller. Got the first down to 35 and more. Up to the 40-yard line. Mike Fox on the stop. Could be the last play of the first quarter. Eight seconds to go, and the clock is rolling. And Michigan is moving here. Have come back to their 40 yard line to pick up a first and 10. That's where they'll start the second period with Los Angeles in the lead 10 to 7. And he struggles to around the 45. Oh, it was Miller. Cleo Miller got the handoff. Up to the 45. First period. There you can see a Los Angeles ahead on the ground. Michigan ahead through the air. Well, pretty even at this point. There's not much to distinguish the difference. And, of course, the score 10 to 7 in, in favor of Los Angeles. But once again, both clubs using a fine changeup in their offensive attacks. And now Jim Stanley using two halfbacks, Williams and Miller, as he's running back with Abair. Second and six, and here's a play action take by Abair. Over the middle, it's caught by the tight end, Cobb. Down into the Los Angeles 45 for a first down. Mike Fox made the stop, and a penalty flag is thrown. Might have been a little roughing there, watch it. Well, as Abair once again with the play action, then rolling slightly to his right. He's got Cobb crossing from left to right in this instance. Mike Fox coming across to make the yep. tackle, get the hand in there, and looks like a face mask call. That's going to cost Los Angeles even more, and this is rolling face in. Face mask, number 27 on the defense, first down. You know, Mike Fox got his start. He was really their nickel back when they brought in five defensive backs. Scott Byers, the regular starting safety, hurt his knee. He got his chance, has proved himself very efficient in that spot. That time they had to tackle a little extra on it with a penalty. That's what Williams did last week. He's in there now with Lacey as the running back. Bear has his team rolling again. Here's the delay again to Lacey. Lacey gets a hole down to the 31. Alvin Burles from the strong safety. A full work on defense for the Express. And Danny Rich makes the stop on the 31. But it's a sizable gain, about six yards on the play. And Michigan rolling again. And these two defensive teams are putting on an offensive show. <laughs> well, they certainly are. The two offenses are right now pretty much taking apart the defenses. And again, the mixture has kept both defenses off balance. Second down and six. Carter and McLean are wide receivers. Aber play action rolling. Aber going for Carter. He's got it inside the 20. the 19-yard line. Once again, Hebert faking and then rolling slightly to his right. 
the defense having gone into a double coverage type of a situation out there, Carter came downfield, made a break to the inside, giving him more outside room to the sideline, and then did that sideline toe tapper, or they bear threw it in perfectly. Now they're putting Carter over the wide side of the field, a lot of room to work. Looks like single coverage over here on Carter. Let's see what Abair has in mind. Here comes Abair on a handoff instead. Up the middle goes Williams. Inside the 15-yard line goes John Williams. That plunges on to the 13. Stopped by Greg Fields, the left end of Los Angeles. Well, as the stat showed earlier, Williams had that great game a week ago when he gained 133 yards. We look back at that previous play. <laughs> going on, Carter shoving off a little bit. But trying to be tenacious, he ties him up a little. They were coming with a sweep to that side, pulling the guard. Knew there was nothing wide, turned it up inside for a nice game. Game of six, second and four for Michigan. A relentless drive again by the Panthers. They came from behind the first four. Here they go. Handoff is through the middle. Lacey to about the 10 yard line. Maybe close to first down. I think it is short by a yard. It'll be third and about one for Michigan on the Los Angeles 10. What do you do here, Don? Well, I'm sure they're going to probably try and run it. They're having success on the ground. It's a carryover from a week ago. They're moving it well tonight. John Williams has been effective. Lacey's a hard running back. I would say they're going to try and pound one out. Double tight end. Cobb echoes in. Extra four back. Bull Hagen is in there. They're going for the first down to 10. There goes Hagen in motion. They give it to Lacey, and he is thrown for loss. Back at the nine-yard line by Dan Luce, and it looks like Michigan will have to go for the tie. A big defensive play by Dan Luce, a former Wolf Packer from NC State. Well, he did a good job of shooting the gap at that point. They get penetration with it, and uh, the player that came in to make the tackle in the gap was yep. Mike Fox, the free safety in the short yardage defense. It's a 6-1 type of a thing. He goes on flow. And he was blitzing from that safety spot, got the crack, and saved any opportunity or chance for a first down. Boyovich to try for a 30-yard field goal. That'll be held at the 20 by Whit Taylor. Spotted, and the kick by Boyovich is 20 young, and it is good. Novo Boyovich has tied it up for Michigan. 11.15 to go in the first half, and we are 10 to 10. Showdown Monday night here on ESPN. Herschel Walker, the great All-American of Georgia for the New Year's in general, traveling to uh, Chicago to meet the Chicago Blitz, coached by the defensive genius George Allen. Remember how George could stop the big guys? Well, here he's got a big one, Don. Well, he certainly has. He's struggling a little bit, but everybody thought he'd have the best club in the league. Well, join our Jim Simpson, Paul McGuire for that one. Moving kickoff and back for the return. Out of the end zone comes Colby. Who is he cracked hard around the 18-yard line? But Mark Colbert, a gritty little guy from California, Pomona, just took that lick and bounced right on up to the 20-yard line. Hit by Carl Borland, a linebacker from Michigan. Well, if you don't think enthusiasm is effective, Bojovic, two times in a row on kickoffs, has been down pretty close to where the action is. Twice he has been flattened. This was the second time. He got up, he had a smile on his face, started to the express bench before he realized where he was, got stung a little bit, and came to the sideline. Well, he's a tough little guy, and so's Vince Abbott, the kicker from Michigan. Tell you more about him later. First down play. Here's the play action played by Mike Ray. Ray is caught and sacked at the 15 yard line by Corker. The 17th sack of the year by John Corker. The brilliant linebacker, the sack man from Michigan. And it'll be back around the 15. Alafua was also in there. Now they're going to say he was stopped around the 19th. What happened there? Well, as Ray goes back, the officials, uh, and the fans, I mean, felt that, uh, that maybe he should have gotten uh, what he fast. got out of it and moved it back. But he got the good pressure, double pressure, by two of the defensive personnel there. And Ray was down in a hurry. 
Pitches to Bodie, or rather to uh, Barnett, on a sweep to the right over the 25. Stop well short of the markers. And the Michigan defense trying to arouse itself here after they pulled even the 10 10 in the second quarter. Still over 10 minutes to go in the first half from Pontiac Silverdome, and on Monday night we'll be in Chicago for ESPN. Bring you the action between the New Jersey and the Herschel Walker and the Chicago Blitz of George Allen. David Greenwood making a great force and kind of tearing up the blocking there, stopping it in a hurry. Big play for Mike Ray, third and six. Rolling out there this time. Now he's getting plenty of time. Can't give him this much time. Here's Ray. Got his man down there and is caught around the 44-yard line for first down. Caught by Tony Bodie. No way you can cover for that long a period. That was a great scramble by Ray, and Bodie's limping. Well, as Ray is moving out to his right in a semi-roll or sprint action. He wants to throw to the left side there. He has nothing. All the pursuit had gone that way. He comes back to the right, has a long time. He sees Greenwood bearing down on him. Spots Bodie. Bodie kind of twists his ankle and his knee as he went to the ground to catch that football. He is an excellent receiver, the second high receiver for this club. That is where a good rush is on, and there's Duke out of the sidelines of Tennessee Williams. It is incomplete pass. Boy, it was a fine defensive play by Clarence Chapman. It really was. He's been beaten once or twice early. This time, Chapman drove on the ball, got the right hand in there, got a little piece of him just as he was trying to put it away and caused him to drop it. Good defensive corner play. Second and 10 on the 44. Mike Sherrod and Ricky Ellis. Two tight ends are in now for Los Angeles. Ellis, though, can play like a wide receiver. Out to the right side is Kevin Williams. Only one step back is Hazlitt. Passing play for Ray. Ray fires to the sidelines and a penalty marker thrown. Penalty marker thrown downfield. Let's see what this is all about. That went down in the Michigan defensive secondary. And it's holding against Michigan. So someone down there was holding the receiver. And that will cost uh, Jim Stanley's Michigan Panthers, who have pulled even 10-10, but now they've been unable to stop the Express of Los Angeles. Let's listen. Holding, number 57 on the defense. That's a first down. Well, that's just a corker. Corker may be a little frustrated because he got that sack a moment ago taken away from him when uh, he thought he had the man trapped. And Jim Stanley on the sideline, he's a little bit exasperated, too. He didn't feel like that to be the case. Ricky Ellis, the intended receiver. Both clubs feature their tight ends. Tonight, they have not gone to him that much. Now in the I formation, here comes Williams in motion, and there is a handoff to the tailback, and Barnett gets a big hole down the middle to the 40, and my pick a first down. Bill Doak trips up Barnett at around the Michigan 40, but that should be another first down for the Express. And Mike Ray trips up himself. He almost doesn't get the handoff to him. You see him falling to the ground. Excellent blocking out in front. He picks his way downfield nicely. Gets a nice gain right up the middle. One game at Oregon Tech, he gained 290 yards. That was his biggest game and scored three touchdowns. So uh, he's no stranger when he gets a little bit of a crack in there. Uh, he made All-American in the NAIA. Now he's replaced by Bodie. So I guess Bodie's injury a while ago wasn't anything serious. Now it looks like Michigan was offside on the play. They'll call him coach from here before the snap. Unless there was a movement in the Los Angeles line, this is going to cost Michigan five yards. John Corker, a little anxious that time. And they're going to say it was a drawn offside by Los Angeles. So the five yards would be walked off against L.A. here at the eight-minute mark in the first half and a 10-10 tie. And I'll fix these fireworks here under the Silver Dome tonight. And coming up Monday, it should be a confrontation. Herschel Walker of New Jersey against Chicago's defense of the blitz. A little interpretation. I tell you, these two coaches, both of them, you talk about self-control and laid-back styles of coaching. Both of them are of that same type of teaching. They don't normally get real excited, but they are going to show their displeasure at the time. So far, Campbell's gone all the way with Ray. Ray a little soft one, and ooh, boy, is Bodie really hair-lift over there by Mr. Corker. 
John Corker almost tore off Bodie's head as the ball got there around the 40-yard line. As well as the police had. At 6'6", six, six, Corker can hit. Tipped it in the middle. He gets double team. He's the second leading sacker on this Michigan club. So they hold him out of there. But you can see what it's like down close when a guy of Corker's size puts a hit on you. Now Ray's at four out of seven for 56 yards. Missed the last couple of times, and this is defense is 15 here, and it is second down and 15 now, the 45-yard line. Two wide receivers out. Ains to the right side, and back is Ray. Throws on the back to a little screen. Here comes Bodie, looking for blockers, but he won't get enough at the 40. Pulled down after a five-yard pickup by David Greenwood. Number one draft choice, the strong safety of Michigan. Tipton is trying to get handled inside, gets knocked around. He got the screen set up on this side. David Greenwood moving very well, reads it perfectly, comes back, makes a fine tackle. What an athlete he is out of Wisconsin. Seven foot two high jumper at Wisconsin, led the Big Ten. We're tied 10 10. Jones, the right guard of Los Angeles, who's shaken up on the play. The Express has had atrocious luck with his offensive lineman. They lost three or four. They only signed Jones about two weeks ago, so Hugh Campbell's had headaches in his offensive line. May have to go with Mike Durrett, who really hasn't recovered from a shoulder injury. Well tied at 10 to 10. Hugh Campbell sort of smiling there, but you know he's thinking. He observes everything. Mike Durrett will come back in with those short, short shoulders as Jones is being helped off. Appears to have an ankle injury. At least he is walking on it to some extent. At one point, with this offensive club of the LA Express, they had 10 of 11 players that were rookies, so they were, were really young. Then they filled in with some veteran people. They've had a number of injuries along the way with the offensive line. Now they have another. They have to make another adjustment. Well, Allen is out at center. Hitchcock, who normally is the right guard, has been forced to play center. And now Jones has come in with Durrett injured, but now with Jones popping off here, Durrett will be pressed back into service, even though his shoulder is completely healed. Well, Hitchcock was the third center they tried. Originally, as you indicated, he was the guard uh, out of Tulane University. Third and ten. Mike Ray needs a big play. Good flip is on. Ray's going deep over the wrong shoulder intended for Ellis. Ellis turned to his right and was over the left shoulder. Well, that might have been six points because Ellis definitely had gotten by Greenwood. Well, I think Mike Ray felt the pressure that time. They really did not have that much on him, but he sensed it as he had Corker coming from his left. And a quarterback, you don't always have to see him. You can hear him or you can smell him. And he rushed the pass just a little bit because Ellis had a step or two there. Could have had a big gain out of it. Jeff Partridge is the best punter in Washington history. Will come in as Anthony Carter. Now we reach the 10. I would guess your Partridge will try to kick that ball out of bounds somewhere and keep it out of the hands of Carter. Kicking from the 40, or he might just try to put it in the end zone. Oh, snap. The Partridge is getting away. A pretty good rush, and Carter's going to take it. At the 13 yard line. Carter, no room to run. Pulled out of the 18 yard line, and from there, Michigan will start again with a score tied at 10 10, 7 minutes to the half. be a great field up there. Lindo, Gelitis, McEnroe, former champion, so that should be exciting action in tennis here on the ESPN. And here we have football live for you from Pontiac, Michigan, and it's been an offensive firework. Los Angeles, Michigan, ten apiece with seven minutes and nine seconds to go in the first half. Bobby Hebert, the brilliant looking quarterback from Northwest Louisiana State, has taken Michigan twice down to scoring position, and he will start here from his own 18. Hebert back on the draw. Here's it off, and here comes Lacey. 30. Big game, 35. Now he's got a chance at the 50. Lacey, one man to beat. Lacey jumps over him and he's still on a shoestring tackle by Danny Rich at the 25 yard line. Rich saves the touchdown run, but what a game for Michigan, for Michigan with Ken Lacey, the rookie from Tulsa. 
nice running by Ken Lacey. Again, a draw. They set it up perfectly. There's nothing in the middle where he wanted to go. He alertly breaks it to the outside. Anthony Carter gets a block out in front of him. Good running by Lacey trying to help set up that block. But Danny Rich saves the touchdown. He's the all-time tackler at Weber State where he had 464 tackles in that career. And he saved six of this one. 57-yard run by uh, Ken Lacey. And Michigan now threatening suddenly again. They give it up the middle to Cleo Miller, and he doggedly fights his way in traffic inside the 20 to maybe the 18-yard line. He's going to get about another five yards on the play. Michigan now is definitely in a position to break back on top. They once led in the game 7-3. to three. Los Angeles came back to go ahead 10-7, to seven, and Michigan pulled even at 10-10. Uh, and now here's the Panthers again, clawing their way back toward the top. 29 is Holloway, 1 is Carter as they go out to their post, the wide spot. A. Bear looks over the defense. Three man front, four linebackers for Los Angeles. On second and five, it's A. Bear giving off to Williams. John Williams on a sweep. Close to the 10 yard line. That'll be another first down for Michigan. Stopped by Mike Fox and Alvin Burroughs from the two safeties. But not before Williams crossed the boundary at the 10. Well, again, the conventional sweep as A. Bear hands off. Tyrone McGriff gets held up a little bit. He picks up a nice block by Dornbrook out in front. Turns up to the inside. That isn't going to be a clean type of sweep where you come around there with a lot of running room. It's normally what you refer to as a sticky sweep. You get a little alley up to the inside, which he got at that point, and moves it just inside of the 10. Just inside the 10 play, which makes it first and goal now for Michigan. First down on a handoff. Gets it to Lacey. And the hero of this drive takes it down close to the seventh. Alan Burleson, who uh, spearheads this Los Angeles defense. Great star in Canada. Makes the stop. Well, it's just a short side slant. Nothing fancy about it. They man block it up front or zone block it. Lacey bounces off a couple of people. Burleson whose effectiveness really is his attack where he had his second interception tonight, leads that club secondary with 51 tackles, saves a near touchdown. Got it on the six. Second and goal from there, score tie. Here is the give inside again to Williams. And not much doing there. Eric Scoggins closed the gap from an outside linebacking post. Los Angeles defense has been tough down here in the short yardage situation. And now we'll see, will Aber go to the air? Well, I would think at this point that he would most likely go to the air. We might see him roll out as well, because he is an active guy back there. He's 6'4". He was an excellent baseball player, among other things, but he throws well on the run, and he can run with it if he gets the daylight. Look out for Mike Cobb, the tight end. He's on the right, strong side to the right. And he's looking for Cobb over the middle to Carter. Cobb was wide open. Oh, Cobb was wide open, and he goes to Carter, who was covered, and Cobb is down there throwing his hands up. Henderson broke up the pass and sent it for Carter, and maybe Abair got screened off, but a tight end Cobb with no one around him in the end zone. Well, Abair went to the straight conventional drop back, and Hugh Campbell is looking on closely and intently from the sidelines, and now we're going to see whether or not they're going to the field goal. It looks like they are. They went to the quick post move, probably the toughest one in football to cover, particularly down in that area. A Bear felt there was interference. Well, Yovich will try to put him back in the race. It'll be an attempt of 24 yards. With Taylor to hold at the 14, the kick is drilled right in there by Boyovich. His second field goal of the game. Once more, Michigan has the lead, 13 to 10. UCLA a year ago, the rookie. Hasn't been in yet, Don. Will we see him later? Well, I think there's a good chance we will. Uh, Hugh Campbell says that there's no plan in his thinking. It's a matter of feel. And if he thinks that Ray isn't moving the club quite like he would like, then he would bring Ramsey in. I think we'll see him. Well, you know, for the kickoff. Has it going toward Mark Colbert at the three. Colbert. Back to the 15. Oh, and hard. Short of the 20-yard line. Great coverage downfield. 
number 62 got him, Andy Canavino. Canavino's been sort of a star of these specialty teams, and he really was a head on at that time. There's the scoring drive. Why we've had some scoring drives tonight. That's the third scoring drive of better than 70 yards. Another one went 63 yards. This one could miss him just over three minutes and seven plays, ending in a 24-yard Oyovic field goal. And it broke the 10-10 tie, and Michigan's back on top. Panthers 13, Los Angeles Express 10. Mike Ray continues at quarterback in his 10th year of professional football, a 31-year-old veteran from Southern California. Gives his tailback, and breaking one tackle goes Bodie, and he stops short of the 20-yard line. Bodie's been a workhorse tonight in the Los Angeles backfield, had one great run to set up a score. Stopped by Robert Pennywell, inside linebacker from Michigan. Pennywell, who was a great star down at Grambling and played in Atlanta. For the last four years, with the sixth round draft choice of San Francisco when he first came into the world for the Special Football. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go in the first half. Bodie now goes out of there, and John Barnett comes back in, along with Wilbert Haslip in the backfield. There's the tight end, Ellis, moving around. Here's Ray, a rush on Ray, rush, he drills it, caught by Ellis over the 25, the 30, the big guy, the 29, it's going to be a first down for Los Angeles. Ricky Hollywood Ellis, with his first catch tonight, leading receiver for Los Angeles, finally gets free with Corker all over him. Well, he has been around a little bit, he's been with several clubs, Ellis going in motion, then coming back the other way, now he goes outside, he delays, comes underneath, as they send the back out of there, he's wide open. Picks up a nice gain, takes a good hit in that secondary. Ellis uh, played with some pretty good people along the way. He played with Vince Evans uh, in college. And I was out there in Los Angeles City College. They had a great, great team. Now they give it up the middle of the tailback, and Barnett, with a penalty flag being dropped, is stacked up around the 30-yard line. The clock goes two minutes and 22 seconds to go on the half. There you see the yellow marker. Let's see what that's all about. You know, you say that L.A. City College is Corker coming to the inside. Pretty good job holding him off with a tight end. Gets a, a fairly decent position on him. He's got to try and wheel those feet and seal him off, but it's effective enough. You mentioned that L.A. City College club. They had Rod Martin, a defensive back, with uh, the Oakland uh, Ball Club. They had Mike Douglas. Number 86 on the offense. The penalty is declined. Second down. I started to say as the call is made by the official, Mike Douglas, the linebacker at Green Bay, and we mentioned Vince Evans, so there's three pretty good football players along with Ricky Ellis. Second down and ten now as Michigan takes the defensive play, which was a good one, and so now Mike Ray has uh, only two plays here to pick up the ten yards, back in his own territory at the 30. Here's Ray looking to the air lane. Rush from the weak stuff, blind side, and it is caught over there by Haynes, and he goes out of bounds uh, for a first down around the 40-yard line, or did he catch it out of bounds? It was out of bounds, incomplete. Haynes got it, but he was out of bounds. Got to get both feet down, watch. Well, once again, breaking it to oh, the outside, he didn't hang on to the football at that point. Good play by Fred Logan as he got a hand in there, stripped the ball away. He had no chance of making the play other than trying to jerk him loose from the football. He did it very, very effectively in that instance. All right, third down and 10, and now Michigan can expect the pass here with 2.17 to go in the first half. Williams is to the right side and Haynes to the left. Give it off instead to Barnett, and he is nailed right at the line of scrimmage for Mr. Corker, number 57. John Corker playing another stout game defensively for Michigan. But when you said nailed, you certainly called it absolutely right. He stepped in and filled that, pinned him to the ground. And so, with two minutes to go, two minute warning, and it is 13 10 Michigan. will be our Ford halftime feature, the big plays with Tom Meese, and there have been some big ones in this one. It is 13-10 Michigan over Los Angeles. Well, there have been some big ones, and uh, there's a lot of excitement in this particular football game. The last time, the defensive linebacker, Corker, they're moving him around, brought him to the inside. They're trying to create a little confusion for the Express, and of course, he stopped them in the third down situation. 
His crowd buzzing now. They expect Anthony Carter to get the ball here. Partridge is in the punt from back in his own territory. They have to stay back and block for him. And Carter is waiting upfield. Backtracking to his own 21-yard line. Here comes Carter. Are they looking for holes? Coming to the outside. Giving ground. It may cost him, and it does. He's collared at the 20-yard line. Tremendous coverage. Downfield for uh, Greg Williams and also for Clifton Alapa. So Los Angeles has Carter Major. Well, Partridge kicked away from him. He kicked a, a boomer that time. They were trying to set it up on the left side. Carter brought it back up the middle, then tried to veer it back to the outside, making a mistake of going lateral. Despite his speed, he was outmaneuvered and outflanked at that point and cost him a few yards. And with a three-point lead, it's doubtful that Michigan's going to try much fancy here back at their own 20-yard line. the man who tipped the ball, Greg Fields, six foot six, hard to throw over the big guy from Grambling. Well, as Bear drops back, he tried to take something off of it. He wanted to go inside to Carter. He sort of tried to ease up with it. He got popped a little as he was throwing the football, but Greg Fields going high in the air, tipped it away. Lucky it didn't bounce straight up. He might have had an interception. Well, no, no sooner had we said, we don't think they'll do anything fancy, take chances here with a three-point lead. They pull what almost was a dangerous play. Gives it inside the lacy, nothing going. He is right down in his track. Fields was there to hit him, and he's also being challenged by one of the other Los Angeles players. Greg Fields has taken a hard inside move. Tony Osmond, the offensive tackle, didn't handle it. Carter got a little personal duel going on out there, but he isn't about to be intimidated. He and Henderson are battling it out. Carter is having a pretty good night so far catching the football, so he says, well, I'm going to block a little bit more, too. Greg Fields, you can see, hands on knees, resting just a little, making two nice plays in a row, blocking the pass, and then making the tackle is Jim Stanley talking with a bear on the sideline. Los Angeles now call time out to stop the clock with 1.28 to go. They expect to get back the ball, and we expect to see fireworks here on Monday night. Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire will be on hand in Chicago. The flip will be facing Mr. Herschel Walker, number 34 of the New Jersey Generals, and that will be our USFL Monday night game. So join us here April 25th at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Don't forget those clocks roll up tonight as we have New Jersey versus Chicago. Herschel against Paul, against uh, George Allen. There's oh, Jim, Jim Stanley. Stanley. Yep. Excuse me. Jim Stanley over on the sidelines. All the plays go through his headset that are being called from upstairs. And he's kind of got a dry sense of humor. He says, well, whenever I step in to make a selection, he said, I only call the good ones, the bad ones to come from the box. Well, on his second week in a row, he's had a runner that's gained 100 yards. Last week it was John Williams. Well, Lacey has done it here in one half. 11 carries for 100 yards, and he's having a great game. Remember, the record in the USFL is 177 yards. That is shared by Kelvin Bryant and Herschel Walker. Third down and 11. Another handoff. In the backfield to Lacey, and he's going to be swamped by Dennis Edwards. Angeles will get the ball for at least a few plays. Still a minute, 20 to go in the first half. And that time, uh, Michigan really played it close to the best after that first play. And Los Angeles using its times out here, conserving the clock. They'll have a minute, 20 to go, and a lot of time, and pretty good field position, you would imagine, uh, Don Heinrich, because they look to get the ball somewhere around midfield. Well, I would say it is pretty good field position. Uh, they got Herman Weaver doing the kicking, old Thunderfoot, as... Hugh Campbell is saying, guys, we've got to get advantages back here. We're trailing a little bit, and we want to get a few more points on the board. Dennis Edwards has 47 tackles in that defensive line. He leads them. So uh, he said that a lot of the credit of his play was due to the fact that his years at USC, he worked against Anthony Munoz of Cincinnati, the outstanding all-pro offensive tackle. So that's a load to get a lesson from. Boy, that Munoz is a mountain. Uh, he is, if you've never been up close to him, he is something tremendous and awesome in size. Now here's Thunderfoot. Herman Weaver. 
back to kick. He is averaging 36.5. waiting back here for Los Angeles. Now you're getting a good view here of what Thunderfoot's going to see downfield. One minute, 20 seconds to go. And delay of game by Michigan. So they were trying to draw Los Angeles offside and the Express would not take the bait. That would be a five-yard walk-off. I would question that particular call to try and figure that they're going to jump off in that situation. Maybe if it was a yard or two, they'd be a little more aggressive, but good poise by that express punt return team. They know from fourth and 11 or 12 that what good's it going to do? Make them kick it away. And Thunderfoot's been known to shank one occasionally. Let's see. But, uh, and there it goes off the side of his foot, but it's going to go downfield and takes a good bounce from Michigan and is grabbed by Fox, and he is taken down immediately. Tremendous coverage, but it turned out to be a fine play for Michigan. Los Angeles back inside his own 40 with a minute 10 remaining. So that play took 10 seconds. John Arnod was back, uh, or downfield to cover for the Panthers, and it'll be first and 10 at the 39 for Los Angeles. Well, Arnod would like to get his starting job back. He was the, initially the starting free safety up until a week ago, and then uh, the shuffle, Ron Osborne moved there from the corner, so now he's relegated to special teams, got down quickly. Now you see the Express can stop the clock one more time. Michigan has all three times out remaining. One minute, 10 seconds to go. Coming up tomorrow in the USFL, Boston will be at Philadelphia, Oakland and Birmingham, Tampa Bay and Washington, Then on Monday, our big one here on ESPN, New Jersey and Chicago. Back goes Ray, on first down, Ray goes underneath, and he throws his tight end Mike Sherrod, who stops the clock from going out of bounds, short of the 50-yard line, so they take the short game to kill the clock at 104, Oliver Davis at strong safety, and maybe a fifth back in there now as Michigan looks for the pass. So Ray taking what uh, Michigan gives him. Michigan was playing a very soft defense, protecting long, so he went underneath to his tight end on a crossing pattern. Well, they went with that nickel defense. They bring in Albert Gray, who normally plays one of the corners. Sometimes they go with six defensive backs, and they bring in Oliver Davis, so Gray and Davis may be in there. Williamson Haynes, the wide receiver. Here's Ray over the middle again, and he's going this time to Haynes, who takes it down the middle, keeps the clock rolling to the 40. The clock will stop here on the first down play, though. They'll move up the chain, which will take it down to Washington 39. Well, they're getting close now for Vince Abbott, who is perfect on the field goes over 40 yards. That's not missing. He's great. Now Haynes again, the sidelines, kills the clock at the 33, 32. So Chris Haynes grabs another one. Sure hand receiver out of Notre Dame. And this Los Angeles drive has been impressive indeed. They, what a contrast here to what uh, Michigan did, getting the ball back down deep with a three-point lead. And what Los Angeles has done after the punt, they have come downfield beautifully under the direction of uh, Mike Ray. Good job by Haynes that time. Davis, who's in there as a six defensive back, and then delayed back to the outside, got the first and got out of bounds. Got the big yardage. 42 seconds to go. Ray goes to sidelines again. He has got Haynes out of bounds. Inside the 20, and now they're definitely in field goal range to tie it at least. 37 seconds to go, but the Express is thinking more than just three points. Well, a good job by Haynes. He runs essentially the same thing that he did on the other side. They just turned it over. Good throw by Ray. He had a good area to throw the ball through. Haynes, recognizing where he is, wants to get out of bounds. He does. They got him in a trade from the Chicago Blitz. Now we're getting back. a penalty marked off against the Express. Off the coffee one. Encroachment. Number 86 on the offense. Mike Sherrod. Second down. Sorry. Mike Sherrod is now a tight end into the neutral zone before the snap. Might have lined up there, who knows. And so it is second down. And, but more importantly, it is taking the ball back out of field goal range for Los Angeles. They lose the yardage gain on the pass and suffer five-yard penalty. Big play. Second half of Mike Ray. Four-man rush. Ray on a 
screen, gets it to Bodie. Bodie the 30, Bodie the 25. Bodie's got it back in field goal range. The clock's still rolling, though, with 25 seconds to go. And Los Angeles, now they'll stop it to move up the chain. Well, that was a good call by Mike Ray. He smelled a little rush coming, and he called a delayed screen. And he got the ball in the hands of Tony Bodie, who knows what to do then. Well, we get another timeout being called at this point. On the sidelines, you see Hugh Campbell conferring with Ray to see what they want to do at this stage. Well, now, the screen. Don, what this does, Don, is no more timeout left for Hugh Campbell. So if he's thinking field goal now, he's got to think about the play to set it up. He cannot keep the ball in play or time's going to run out, right? Well, yes, that's true. And Mike Ray, he's been around. He spent 10 years playing professional ball, uh, football as Jim Stanley talking with his defensive coordinator, Larry Coyer, on the sidelines. He calls in the signal. Stanley has uh, been, generally, his background has been in the defensive area, so he wants to confer. But going back to Hugh Campbell's situation, I would think with 26 seconds left here, uh, they have a first down, so they have plenty of downs. They could get off at least three plays. And I would imagine Ray, as I said, 10 years of experience, he's going to throw it away if nothing is there. And it would be, at this point, logical for him to try to go to the end zone for the six, at least for one shot, maybe this time coming right up. And if it isn't there, put it out of the end zone. Abbott has not missed from this range this year. He's 9 for 9 on field goals inside 40-yard line. And right now, they're inside 40. First down for Los Angeles. Mike Ray. Mike Ray. Fires it for the end zone to Kane. Touchdown, Chris Kane. And that's all it takes. Boy, there's the experience of Mike Ray. He laid it in there perfectly for Haynes. And you got to say, the Notre Dame veteran was the star of this drive along with Ray. Every key pass, watch this. Well, he gets plenty of time. A little semi roll to the right, leaning to his left. Haynes, who was out of the picture, came down, made a move to the post, and then broke it back to the outside. Kind of a zig out type of a move. And uh, Logan, who was in that area, <laughs> got beat. And you can see Corker leaping high in the air, trying to get to it, but Haynes does the right thing. He goes to the ground where the ball is. He did not run away from it at that stage. He moved down to the football and a big six point. Ben Babbitt, who's been taking three points, now comes in with a point out. And he's perfect again. So, instead of going for the tie, Los Angeles Express has regained the lead. That was a brilliant drive downfield. Went over half the distance of the field. And there's Chris Haynes, who caught about four key passes on that drive, including the 24-yarder for the touchdown as Los Angeles goes back in the lead for the third time in this game. It's 17-13 with 19 seconds to go. And you've got to think that, that the Michigan is not out of this thing yet either. Well, they certainly aren't. There's a, another half to go with uh, L.A. ahead 17-13. Big play by Haynes, and we felt, or I felt, that at that point, that Mike Ray would go to the end zone, Hugh Campbell would go to the end zone. I'm sure that he had a voice in the call as he was signaling the coverage team, look, just make sure you cover it. The drive going 61 yards in five plays, a very effective drive, a lot of fine throwing, took 51 seconds throwing by Mike Ray, good reception by Chris Haynes, but starting to say that he was a an intelligent receiver along with that excellent speed that he has. He goes to law school in the offseason, but he has a feel back there where those open areas are. And when he ran that zig out or post corner move, Ray put it in for six. Now back is uh, Holloway for the kickoff return, and it is a uh, short kick, and it's going to be returned up over the 40 yard line. And it'll be 14 seconds to go for Michigan. And they now trail by four points in the game. Fairly decent field position, uh, one or two long plays. But Jovic, who has got the strong leg with about a 15 or so yard picked up at this point, he can take a pop at one. Vince Abbott that time purposely squibbed the ball on the ground. He's a former soccer player from England, so he knows how to lay those things down there on that rug. Also a former rugby player. He's a great athlete, Abbott is. Carter's on the left side. Very 
deep that time with Holloway down the right sideline, Carter down the left, and Cobb ran a very deep post pattern over the middle. Well, they had that prevent defense on, and Jim Stanley says, hey, we want to get some yards here. I was a little surprised that he went deep at that point. They had three timeouts, so if he had gone down the middle where there is a big hole, he had plenty of time to take and utilize one of those timeouts. Now they're down to eight seconds. Eight seconds to go, and they've got 58 yards to cover, or at least they've got to get about 35 or 40 yards and get it down there for Boyovi. Hebert, Hebert going the sidelines for Holloway, intercepted by Los Angeles. And taken out of bounds immediately by Burleson. And that stops the threat by Michigan as Burleson steps in to get his third interception of the season and his second of this game. Well, Hebert making a bad choice as he drops back. Plenty of protection, only a three-man rush. Turned the play over instead of where he went to Carter the previous play, trying to hit it in the crack on the right side. Absolutely no chance to get it in there. Burleson had it read all the way, just stepped in front of it. He said, this one's mine. I'm taking it down. Well, that's his second of the game and his third of the year in interceptions. Of course, the second time that young Abe Harrison picked off. There are two seconds to go, and Los Angeles will just run out the final two seconds right here. Snap be taken by Ray. He'll drop on it, and that'll be the story of the first half of Pontiac, Michigan. So, Don, a uh, pretty exciting offensive show in the first half. Well, it really has been. There's been a lot of big plays, a lot of running on the ground, a lot of big passes, despite the fact that 17-13, the Panthers, I think we're going to see a continued explosion against two defensive clubs. All right, coming up by uh, halftime, and here at the half in Michigan, it is Express 17, the Panthers 13. have a very competitive football game at halftime. The statistics bear that out. Los Angeles Express lead at 17 to 13. Let's go right to the stats and show you what we mean by competitive. All right, Mike Ray has had the better of it in the air. 11 of 17. Bobby Abair only 6 of 13. The passing yards, LA has the better, but on the other end, Michigan has the better of it in the rushing department. The total yards, though, only seven yards separate these two football teams. Other stats to show you. First downs, L.A., a minimal advantage there, 12 to 10. Turnovers, Michigan has two of them, but neither one has really figured in the scoring. Time of possession, well, you figure it out. What does it mean? L.A. Uh, leads uh, 16 minutes to 13 minutes. In short, a very, very even football game with the L.A. Express coming up with a big touchdown the last minute of play in the first half. Mike Ray to Chris Haynes. The Michigan Panther defense has been very stingy the last two weeks, but overall, so far in the first half, they've already given up 226 total yards to the LA Express. Coach Jim Stanley won't have put a lid on that. We'll see if he's successful. Let's go back now for the second half kickoff at the Silverdome. Let's rejoin Jim Thacker and Don Heinrich for all the play-by-play. A four-point lead by Los Angeles, and the Express is in the lead thanks to a play that was turned off to be almost controversial in the first quarter with Michigan leading 7-3. Los Angeles down deep inside the 10-yard line, and here's the play on the pitch to Bodie. Well, as Bodie comes around that left side and the tackle is missed, he gets hit at the goal line and gets spun around. Now, looking at that angle, it's difficult to say. At a ground level angle, where he's coming right at you, you get a look in the living room, what it's like to be hit. The ball does not have to cross the plane of the goal line. It only has to touch it. I feel that he did not get over it. Well, it was a very close call. It was a touchdown. Los Angeles lead 17-13, and the second half is underway, and back deep is Colbert at the five-yard line. Kevin Williams is there. 15, Williams to the 20, 25, and out of bounds. The second half is underway, and let's see who will be the quarterback here. Will it be Mike Ray continuing, or will we you see Tom Ramsey, the young rookie from UCLA? Mike, and it's going to be Ray. Mike Ray, who played the entire game on Monday night at Tampa, has continued here. Had an excellent first half, being 11 out of 17 for 139 yards, and the touchdown pass, which went to Haynes in the final seconds of the first half that brought Los Angeles into the lead. And now on top 17-13, Bodie and Hassan are the running back. And the give is to Bodie. Back to the middle over the 30 to the 31. Bentley made the stop. And there is uh, young Tom Ramsey, a brilliant rookie from UCLA who has not seen any service now in the last two ball games. Los Angeles, so we expect Hugh Campbell to use him here. Well, I can relate to both Ray and Ram 
loved in this situation. The years that I spent in New York playing with the Giants, Vince Lombardi was our coach. He used to do that frequently. In fact, every game I would start, depend on how it went. Charlie Connolly would come in. It was a field thing on Vince's part. Second down and eight. And here's the handoff again to the tailback. And this time it is Barnett. Tries to sweep to the strong side of the 30. Filled as he crossed the 35 by strong safety day Greenwood. Up, uh, the wide receivers Chris Haynes and Kevin Williams for use for uh, Los Angeles with uh, Barnett and Bodie alternating a tailback, pass with his fullback and red quarterback. And the interior line are Gus Coppins, Mike Fields, Charlie Pitcock, Mike Durrett, and Wayne Falapa. And uh, for Michigan, they have a line of Padgett, Tipton, and Hughes, linebackers Borland, Penuel, Bettler, and Corker. Now the third down. For another handoff and a loud defense of Michigan, John Corker. Last through and stop the ball carrier, Bodie Cold, and it'll be a fourth spin punting play coming up. Well, coming out of the I formation, he veers back behind it as Ray hands off, but Corker, who was blitzing from the inside, <laughs> got penetration and said, how do you do? Well, I tell you, Corker never makes a gentle tackle. That was another blaster there in the first couple of minutes of the second half. 17-13 L.A., but the Express has to give it the ball quickly. Anthony Carter's waiting back deep. And here to punish Jeff Partridge for Los Angeles. Not a good kick. Off the side of his little squiver. And it'll be great field position for Michigan. Around the midfield stripe. And it might even be in Los Angeles territory. They're going to spot it around the 48-yard line of Michigan. Well, Partridge getting a bad drop as you see the ball going out to the side. He comes across with his right foot. In kicking the football, punting-wise, you've got to get that ball straight out in front of you. That time, he sort of angled it across, and as he sliced it off the side and shanked it, Bojovic caught it on the sideline. He said, aha, he got field position. Only a 17-yard punt by Partridge. A great field position for Michigan. They're at their 48. Bobby Bear has plenty of room to work now as he takes over first and 10. Bear takes on the play action. Goes off the backfield and he's hit Lacey. Over the 40 for first down. Ken Lacey out of the backfield. And Bear starts working his magic right from the outset here in the third period. Well, Bear using a roll draw action, you'll see him faking to the back coming in. And then as he comes out, Lacey goes into the flat. The, the Express was totally fooled by it, played the run action. Lacey slipped or he'd have picked up another 10 or 12 yards. That he would have, but it's inside the 40. First and 10 on the Los Angeles 38. Four point lead for the Express. And Michigan getting started early here in the third period. A bear on the handoff. Gives to Lacey. Lacey trying to sweep the left end, cannot turn the corner. Stopped on the 35 yard line. Making the play, Alvin Burleson, Tyrone Justin, and Dennis the Menace Edwards. Edwards played it extremely well from his defensive end spot. He's got 47 tackles coming into this football game. He just paralleled it down the line of scrimmage, played off of it as we have a player hurt. Comes from a big family, six brothers and two sisters. 17-13, we'll be back in a moment. in the third period. Only about three minutes gone by and Michigan is now moving into a threatening spot on the field. First uh, picked up one first down. Now they're down to 30-yard line. Second down about seven. At the 35 of Los Angeles. And a handoff again to Lacey. Around to Miller coming to the left side. Miller stacked up around the 30. Five more yards by Cleo Miller hit by Mike Fox and Dennis Edwards in the Los Angeles defense. There's Miller, who really added some punch here to the running attack for Michigan. He was signed on, eight-year veteran of NFL wars at Cleveland. He rushed for over 2,400 yards and was the top 10 rushing uh, all time there for the Browns. Has now gone over 100 yards since joining the team here. Bothered a little bit by me. Here's a big play right here. Third down and pick up a couple of yards for the first down. And Hebert's going to the air for all of it. He's down to his tight end. Cobb. Cobb inside the 10. Mike Cobb. The 
bouncing off on the right flat, and Hebert really pulled one out of the hat. Well, using the roll draw, I mean the roll action off of the sweep, they didn't pull any guards, but the express anticipating run did not handle Mike Cobb in there. He didn't slow block. He just released off the line, got behind Burleson running a corner type of move. Hebert with nice cut, laid it up over the top, got him in close. Cobb has beaten Scoggins and made the stop at his first and goal, Michigan. And the Panthers are threatening to break back on top. Hebert gives up the middle to Williams. John Williams cracks the middle of the line. Dennis Edwards was in there to hit him short of the five-yard line. Second down and goal coming up here with 9.50 to go in the third period. Well, Michigan, like they did in the first ha half, as have both clubs, continuing to mix up their attacks very, very well, keeping defenses off balance. Third and short, they go with the play-action pass, pick up the big one. Now they're in close. And as a defensive team, view of things here. Hebert gets his team stepped away, wants them. Two tight ends. Running backs Williams and Lacey. Team trails by four. It is second out the five-yard line. Hebert's going to the end zone for a touchdown incomplete. He was trying to go inside to a tight end, Don Eccles. And he threw it a little bit long. Eccles looked like he might have been there. Hebert not happy with himself. He felt he had him. They went to the play action off the right side. They were strong right. Eccles was on the left side with their two tight end attack. He broke to the inside after the fake. Hebert whirled around, threw it high over the top. Could have had six points. Maybe he laid that up for just a little softer. Could have been six. And now it's third down and goal. And a very big play here for Hebert. Field goal would not pull him even. They trail by four. Hebert's got his wide receiver back in there. Off in the flat he goes, and this one will be stopped cold, too. Ron Sewell smelled that play out. Burleson also put in a good charge, and even though he hit Cleo Miller in the flat, did not pick up any yards. Well, Hebert really never had much chance. Burleson, the strong safety coming from the outside, jumped right in his face. A quick reaction by Hebert, but... By virtue of throwing the ball behind him just a little bit, he never had any opportunity at all to get turned up field. The defense in pursuit got there quickly. Doubt that he would have got in, but again, with the ball behind him, no chance to turn up field with it. Bojovic will be going for his third field goal of the ball game. That'll be only one short of a record here in the USFL's first season. Tim Mazzetti kicked four in one game. Bojovic will be going for his third. Will be an attempt of 22 yards. He's kicked one from 30, one from 24, and now 22. Good snap, good kick, and this is back within one. 8.33 to go in the third quarter. It is LA 17, Michigan 16. from tonight from Tampa Stadium. ESPN brings you the Philadelphia Stars with Kelvin Bryant against the Tampa Bay Bandits where Steve Spurrier has done a great job his first year of professional coaching as that team in first place. So, Don, you'll be joining Tom Kelly for that one. Goyovich down a kickoff for Michigan. Big kick. Williams side deep in the end zone. Take him at Tolbert. He will run it out. At the 15. Tolbert to the 20 and he is buried right at the 20-yard line. Los Angeles in the 20 on the lead now down to one point. There's the scoring drive, 47 yards, eight plays, culminating in a 22-yard uh, field goal by Boyovic. And helped along by the short kick of Jeff Partridge. Player is injured down on the field right now. It looks like Wilbert Haslip. All right, we'll be back here as they check the play in a moment. It's the Express leading by single point, 17-16. And another great player you'll be seeing in that game is Trumaine Johnson, the outstanding rookie receiver for Chicago out of Grambling. He leads the USFL receivers, 38 catches, over 530 yards. So you'll see two main jobs on one side of the fence and Herschel Walker on the other. Don't miss that Monday night here on ESPN. 
Here we go, 17-16 Los Angeles, and the best cup of all is still Mike Ray at quarterback. Ray on the face, play action, pressure on, there's a fumble, is it a fumble? And uh, Michigan's up the ball. First down, Michigan. What a break. Number 57, John Corker makes the big play with a recovered fumble. Well, at this point, we may see Ramsey in fairly quick as Ray with the motion coming across the backfield behind him out of the eye formation. He goes with a little play action fake. At that point, Palafua blocking on the right tackle side, 71. They get inside pressure. Ray losing the football. Corker, very alertly, like he frequently is, around that football, picks it up quickly. Michigan in scoring territory. Golden opportunity for Michigan. Eight minutes, ten seconds to go in the third period. Bobby A. there looks for the end zone. He is going down there. It is incomplete. Intended for McLean. Frank McLean was covered by Tyrone Justin. Second down coming up for Michigan. Just outside the 10-yard line. Well, the fans felt that there might have been pass interference there. Justin did a good job. He read his eyes, stuck his hand in at the last moment. The only thing he could do, had the ball been up over the top, it would have been a relatively easy six. Justin coming from an excellent athletic family. He's got a couple of brothers playing in the NFL, one with the Colts, one with the Seattle Seahawks. Second down for Michigan. It's trailing by one point. They're in position to take the lead. Hebert on the draw play, sends his pullback late in the middle of the line, and he makes about a yard, not much more. Back up to the 10, and Lacey. Let's see if he's getting up slowly. There was a penalty flag thrown back in the Los Angeles defensive secondary. Could have been holding. Let's see. Well, just a draw. They went with a changeup, figuring they were going to be giving them the pass rush, but they did not get that. It's going to be a personal foul against like Los Angeles. Volley signal is down there. They did not get the penetration to make the draw run effectively, but they'll pick up some very important yardage with the penalty call. And I believe they get an automatic first at this point. Personal foul, number 74 on the defense, half the distance to the goal, and a first down. You're exactly right, Don Heinrich. First and goal for Michigan. And uh, you can see the position Hugh Campbell seems in over there. They have a one-point lead, and Michigan bearing down. Tailback is Williams. The fullback is Lacey. A Bear is running him out of the Y. Then taken in motion, gives it up the middle of Williams, and he slams down to about the two-yard line. And then a crunching tackle in there by Ron Sewell. Halts him about two yards short of the end zone. It'll be second and goal. Pretty good surge by the offensive line at that point. Tyrone McGriff gets a good little bit of a lift up in there, gets good leverage, a good veer by Williams trying to go back to the daylight, but they squeeze it off in a hurry with that short yardage goal line defense. The fumble was the first turnover by Los Angeles in seven quarters, and it could be a costly one indeed. Second and goal. They give it to Williams over the top, and he stopped just short. John Williams tries a leap over the top. Uh, Jim Stanley, George Dixon, the offensive backfield coach. He's been coaching about 30, 35 years with the glasses on, the cigar. Looks like George Hallis, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, he does a little bit. His wallet isn't quite as big. Papa Bear, that's Jim Stanley. One of the most likable guys you'll ever meet. So he sure is. Both he and Hugh Campbell. Yep, the guys really love him. Now right, it's third and goal. They got less than a yard. Touchdown. I think Hebert got it over, although we see no signal. All you got to do is get it to the goal line, and the clock has been stopped. Hebert tried to keep it, and they're going to say he didn't make it. Got a pretty good surge, but not quite enough. And it'll be fourth down, and now what do you do? Well, this is going to be an interesting call. As Jim Stanley's up conferring on the sideline, you see Hebert going straight ahead. A lot of times, the quarterback will stay 
favor one side or the other. They'll go with one of the guards. In that case, Tyrone McGriff on the left side had a little bit of a crack there. And Jim Stanley says, gotta go for close, it. let's go. They gotta go for it. They miss, they'll have LA pinned by Keith. Fourth down, trailing by one point. They give it to Williams, touchdown. Michigan looking to get pretty good field position. And number one, Anthony Carter at 
an explosive dynamite type runner is waiting to take back the puck. Archer stands back inside his 10. He'll check it from about the 12. Good snap. And a good kick by Carter. Carter going to his right. It's away from Carter and out of bounds. It's a fine punt. No return on those kinds. They'll mark it at the Michigan 41-yard line with the Michigan team leading 24-17. victory as they've had two in a row, so the club is fired up. Got garlic in both sides. First down here for Michigan at their own 41. Adi Hebert taking his team down twice to score. And on the backfield to Cleo Miller. Running high to the left side over 50 and just sucked his hand and bowls over Burleson to the 48. Oh, what a block that was by Tom Dornbrook that sprung loose. Cleo Miller had a good hard run for a first down to the 48-yard line of Los Angeles. Well, you mentioned a, a good block by Dornbrook. It really was, as you'll see him pulling from right to left. He'll cut the linebacker down at that point, doing an excellent job of getting Dan Lute and, of course, picking up some nice yards. That was almost a face guard, too, by the tackler, but it's first and ten. Michigan now once more into L.A. territory. Miller. Sharing the ground, sharing tonight with John Williams. And with Ken Lacey, who's had a big game. And up to Miller again with an opening. All the way to the 35-yard line of Los Angeles. Boy, he has run with authority on the last couple of plays. Cleo Miller's got a lot of spring left. And again, a good block by Dornbrook as he comes across to the trap, turns up into the hole when nobody comes across the line of scrimmage. And they open a big hole as the ball pops loose down on the ground. That's the type of plays that they used a week ago so successfully against the Blitz. A lot of traps both ways in all combinations. Up until that time, they've been a straight-ahead running team, but they found a new attack. Jim Stanley's Michigan Panthers now. They're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. And they say it's dominating this game right here. Here's Hebert with a run. Hebert trying to escape. Hebert fires, and it is caught. because they've run so many traps, they get excellent pressure in a hurry by Meat Cleaver Weaver. But the size of Hebert and the alertness and the quickness, he rolls out away from it, dodges another guy, throws going to his left, a tough throw, Mike Cobb making a fine catch, picks up a big first down. Mike Cobb, a former number one draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals, has put Michigan for a first and ten inside the 20. Williams has got it. Running to the right on the power sweep inside the 15. And stopped at the 11 by Burleson. And Michigan has really taken over this football game and they're taking it to L.A. right now. In the third period, they won the battle at the line. Leading 24-17, they've come from behind and they're playing with a vengeance right now. They really are. They can smell victory even though there's a long way to go. A minute and 43 here in the third. Tom Dornbrook again for the third consecutive time pulling around to the outside, picking up a nice block to spring him for some yardage. Michigan's going to call timeout. One minute, 36 seconds to go. And the third period, Bear, a little confusion out on the field, comes over to talk with Jim Stanley, the sideline. Seven point lead by Michigan at 24-17. And boy, what a change ball club here in the third quarter. Stanley must have said something really key them at halftime. Well, I'm sure they had made some adjustments. They got two big breaks, the turnovers, essentially turnovers, the short punt, and then uh, the recovery of a fumble by... Uh, John Corker, and now the last field position, the Partridge got a reasonably good kick, but still, Michigan 
took over at the 41-yard line, and where they had thrown the ball, as Hugh Campbell looks on, a little disturbed that his club is not performing quite as well, they had used a lot of play action passes throughout that first half. Now they're using the complementary type of plays by pulling those yards, and they feel they have two excellent ones for their trapping and running game. They're proving it as they're moving the football very, very well on the ground as Ramsey begins to warm up on the far sideline. So it looks like Hugh Campbell has said, well, Mike Ray, we aren't moving it like we should. Tom Ramsey, you get ready. Williams and Miller now lining up behind me there. It is second down, short yardage for Michigan. Here's a bear to the air over the middle to the tight end. And he's got echoes almost for a touchdown. Tyrone Justin got him around the 10-yard line, two-yard line. Don Eccles, the 6'4 tight end from Oklahoma State. Well, a good job from the right side, people coming across the field with Eccles on the left side on a crossing pattern. Tough to handle with two tight ends in there. The pressure is on with the blitz. They sort of screen them just a little bit, the flow going that way. Burleson a little slow to jump on it. A nice game. First and goal, tailback is Williams. Remember, he went over the top. Here goes Williams, over the top again. And he's close to the goal line. John Williams, who scored one touchdown tonight on a one-yard run, takes it right down there to the one again. It'll be second and goal. Well, Jim Stanley says, I call the good ones. Here's a chance to find out if he's got one more in his bag of tricks as the ball is sitting inside of the one, roughly about a foot or a foot and a half away from that goal line. The previous most points given up by Los Angeles was 21 points to Arizona, and here is Michigan closing in on 18 points in this quarter if they get the seven points here. 19 seconds to go. They give, now it is a bear in the end zone, touchdown. The top. for the run, and Hebert just lobbed it over to Big Mike Cobb. Well, a footer still short of the goal line, the same play. Good action by Williams as he jumps into the air, just as he has done before to go over the top. A nice fake by Hebert. We said, does Jim Stanley have anything in the bag of tricks? He had one more as Mike Cobb was all alone. The all Big Ten, two year in a row, Michigan State player gets an easy six points. And it's the second touchdown pass by Bobby A. Bear, the rookie from Northwest Louisiana State. He hit uh, Anthony Carter for 26 yards in the first quarter, and now Cobb from the one yard line. And Jovic adds the point after. And it's 31 to 17 as Michigan continues to pour it on here at the Silver Dome in Pontiac tonight. 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. As Michigan now takes command of this game, and Los Angeles is going to have quite a challenge in the fourth quarter to get back. Well, and if Tom Ramsey, in fact, does come into the football game, he's no stranger to bringing a ball club back. He's got a big mountain to climb, trailing 31-17 to against a very fired-up Michigan football team both ways, offensively and defensively. The people in Ann Arbor would remember Tom Ramsey as just uh, a year or so ago, he uh, managed to uh, bring them from the UCLA club at 21 to nothing deficit. And Ricky Ellis, I mean, not Ricky Ellis, I'm sorry, Mike Cobb sitting on the bench, real happy. Mike, uh, George Dixon talking with him, the backfield coach. But that, that situation with Ramsey down to Michigan in Ann Arbor at 21 zip. Ramsey brought him back, and I believe you worked that game, did you not, Jim? I broadcast that game with Paul McGuire. That was a great victory for UCLA, and I'm sure it did a lot to give them confidence because they came back on January 1 and beat them again in the Rose Bowl. Well, Ramsey holds 20 school records, so he's a player. Back in the end zone, we're going to run it out. Here comes Williams. Out over the 15 to 20. Williams fighting his way through tacklers for the 22. A courageous run by Dave Kevin Williams, and he gets it back out, and that ends the third quarter with a score. Express 17, but Panthers 31. Ramsey is still warming up over in the sidelines, but Hugh Campbell says, Nope, I'm going to go another series with Mike Gray. Williams to the right, Haynes to the left here for Mike Gray. His 
team has fallen well behind. As he passed his third period, here's the quick out to Haynes. He grabs it, he's out of bounds over the 30-yard line. A nice game. Boy, Haynes showing that great quickness, made the quick cut to the sidelines as soon as he caught the head up field for about three or four more yards. Good timing, too, as far as Ray was concerned. When you throw that little quick out to the left side, as he did just then, he's got to open up those hips as Hugh Campbell looks on. He's a, really an interesting study, and what a gentleman he is. We talked about Jim Stanley. Hugh Campbell said if he really had his brothers and it was all said and done, he'd like to coach in high school like his old coach, Benny Pierce, out in California did. 17, we'll be right back. Season so far, but it's turned around the other way. Javier Bear, now 
outstanding game. What a great third quarter. Abair hands off to Williams, sweeping to his right. It's been a good running attack tonight by Michigan for a game. Alvin Burleson made that stop for Los Angeles. Williams has run hard. Miller ran hard back in the third period. Lacey's just had an outstanding game, over 100 yards. Well, Mike Cobb is a tight end trying to get a standoff over there on Greg Fields. Does a pretty good job, but they don't like it at the end as Fields grabs his jersey. Actually, Cobb won the battle. He had good position. He pinned Fields in so that he was not able to get there. A little extracurricular activity. Second and seven, A Bears, 11 out of 20 for 142 yards. Two touchdowns. Also had two picked off. One really didn't mean much. The end of the Here goes Cleo Miller, and he is really straightened up hard. Boy, Miller was banged hard by Ron Sewell, inside linebacker. And boom, stopped cold. There's the halftime score. This is a big game for Los Angeles because they're tied with Denver for the Pacific Division lead. And Denver and Arizona, they've got the low-scoring game. Field goal apiece in the first half. We'll try to keep you posted on that game, although this one will end before that one's over. But uh, Denver was even with Los Angeles at the top of the Pacific Coast. That division could wind up in a four-way tie. Only one game separating the bottom from the top. A bear looking over the middle. Tight end and Eccles has got it to 45. Eccles to the 50. Down to the Los Angeles 47 goes Big John Eccles. Hit by Wyman Henderson and has A bear mixed up his receivers. Well, he really has, and he got good protection as he drops back straight in the pocket. They flood the backs out of there. They get a little stun inside, but he hits them right in the crack of the zone. Eccles doesn't get that much playing time as the backup end, but he was happy to get that reception. Broke a tackle as Jim Stanley says, fellas, we got the hot hand, let's keep it moving. It was back in 1955-57 when Jim Stanley was on Bear Bryant's staff at Texas A&M. That started his coaching career. He's six years up on the state. And here he is in Michigan and a quick handoff this time to a fullback Lacey. Tries the middle and not much doing. All right, rather it is uh, Miller, Cleo Miller, stacked up around the 44. Give him a couple of yards. Well, three LA, yards. Excuse me. Excuse me, Jim. L.A. changed up their defense quite a bit, figuring that Michigan's going to be content essentially to keep the ball on the ground. They've had good effectiveness running it. They've had nine people up there in that line of scrimmage either blitzing or faking the blitz a good share of the time. They're really crowding the ball. Again, they've got nine people at the line of scrimmage. Now they jump out. Second and seven. Something might have gone mixed up here. A bear over the middle to his tight end. He has got the big guy Cobb inside the 25-yard line. Henderson and Burleson converged on Mike Cobb. But one more time, Hebert goes to his tight end with success. Well, a great choice of plays, as they've done all evening, keeping them off balance. You mentioned a little bit of confusion. Actually, it was the roll draw action. They had run it earlier and hit the back out of the backfield. That time, anticipating all the people up in there, he kept on coming to the outside and hit Cobb for another nice piece of real estate. Right down to the 25-yard line of Los Angeles. Frank McClain to the right and Anthony Carter to the left. Carter's been quiet. And inside handoff to Williams. He dies down close to the 21. Another little cross buck in there to John Williams. Slant takes him for about three or four yards. Clock rolling along. There's Ramsey who's been warming up on and off here in the second half. Although Mike Ray has been the quarterback of record throughout the game so far for the second week in a row. Up to now. We still have over nine minutes to go and Los Angeles will be getting the ball here sooner or later. Mike Cobb has got six for 80 yards and a touchdown. So he's having another big night. On the top receivers for this Michigan team. Inside gift to Miller and this time Los Angeles is waiting. He's driven back by Rich Simler. 260-pound nose guard, and another 6'6 guy, Greg Fields, 265-pound left end. Well, that's about 530 pounds, and Miller was no match for it. Dimler getting up a little slow, backs up uh, Eddie Weaver. He was a two-time All-Pac-10 guy at USC, normally used as a fourth pass rusher. 
but they went with a little trap play, Tyrone McGriff coming from left to right trying to trap, but the defense squeezed it down and stopped it for the short game. Here's third and uh, about six or seven to go, Bear looking, uh, Bear over the middle, crossing pattern tight in, has got it again, it won't be a first down. Grabbed by Eccles, but he will not get a first down, he's stopped by Eric Scoggins, and we may see Boyovich again. Jovic has taken over the scoring lead for the Michigan team here tonight, moving ahead of Holloway, who's been shut out so far. Jovic has kicked three field goals. He's also added two points after, so that's 11 points for Jovic. And he'll come in and try for another field goal. And position-wise, the ball in an excellent spot on the right hash mark because both sidewinder-type kickers will tend to hook it a little bit. That gives them a little more leeway as far as the angle. 35-yard attempt by Boyovic. No ball. Plenty of distance. Right through there. He's got his fourth of the game, and it ties the USFL record. With eight minutes to go in the game, it is 34-17 Michigan. has tied the USFL record four field goals in one game. Well, Hugh Campbell's got to be tired of looking at soccer-type kickers. He came out here yesterday, and they had the soccer team practicing. The local professional soccer club would not let him practice here in the Dome. They had to go outside, and they've spent a week down in Tampa where they have not had a chance to get home. They're paying for it. Jim Mazzetti of Paul Boston kicked four field goals in one game. Boyovic has been running it back now in from UCLA who's passed for 570 yards so far this year. 52 completions. That is his record. He takes over for Mike Gray with 7.52 to go. Well, you say 7.52. That's a tough spot to be in. The coach says, okay, kid, go in and pull it out. You're a rookie. At 34.17, he's got a long uphill battle. Only made two touchdowns, one field goal, and one two-point conversion. And seven out of it was tight in Ellis, and he hit his man at the 30-yard line. Boy, he put that one in there like a bullet at the 30-yard line. It's a nice pickup of eight yards on the play, but second down and two. Well, he get the action coming across the backfield and turning and going the other way as Ellis runs that little crossing move. Ramsey behind it, pretty much of an arm thrower. He doesn't get a lot of follow-through. Ray on the sideline showing his... Uh, Unhappiness, arms folded, walking away. Hard to fall away that much. 70 points, that's not that bad a night. Defense has really been little. Here's Ramsey running for his life, taken down at the 25. Back on the play by Dave Tipton, who's had a very strong game in the middle of tonight for the Michigan defense. Well, he is number two in sacks. As we mentioned earlier, he had six coming in. This is his second tonight, so he's got eight. And I was going to mention earlier, when Ramsey came in, that it will be interesting to see if Michigan, who is a very aggressive defensive club, a lot of blitzing, as Jim Stanley is checking the call, if they're going to continue to go after Ramsey or sit back, and if Ramsey's mobility will help him. Here goes Ramsey on the quick one. Sideline pattern. Caught by Haynes. Over the 45 to midfield down the Michigan 48. They go to Chris Haynes, whose sure-handed catches has been one of the outstanding features in the Los Angeles attack. And a fine job by Haynes to go up over the top. The defensive back, Clarence Chapman, was right with him. Chapman had 13 deflected passes coming into this game. He's had two tonight. But that time, he lost where the ball was, and Haynes had great awareness, jumped into the air, made a nice catch, and a nice throw by Ramsey. First down here for Los Angeles. They're trailing by 17 points. Play action fake by Ramsey, rolling. 
Ramsey now plants his feet, drills it complete to Haynes at the 35, and he's hit down in his tracks right there. That'll be another first down, though, for the Express. So Ramsey has come off the bench for Los Angeles, and he's done his job. He has the Express rolling, but is there enough time left? Well, he's got it on the move as the play comes in from the sideline, in this case, something that they don't do all that often. They started out the game, Chris Haynes has eight catches so far, a big night going for him. They started out the game with a lot of play action to slow up the rush. Now they're going to more rollouts with Ramsey. Now, this has been Chris Haynes' best night of the year by far for Los Angeles. Now they take the, in the handoff to Bodie through the middle. They catch Bishkin looking for the pass, and Bodie makes it all the way down the 25-yard line. That'll be another first down. So L.A. really rolling now, picking up a spark from Ramsey. Good adjustment by Bodie as he wants to go off that right side, get the trap move. There's nothing there to the trap. He actually went back to the void area that the guard had left. Had a lot of daylight. The kid out of Riverton, Washington, makes a nice game. Now they got both wide receivers to the right, the top of your screen. Kevin Ramsey and Haynes, and they it to the right side, and it's going to be a great play defensively by David Greenwood. Barnett was trapped by Greenwood behind the line of scrimmage. And the number one draft choice out of Wisconsin, David Greenwood, comes up with another big defensive play. He reacts so quickly. He's such an outstanding athlete. The fact that he's had a couple of week layoff, still got a little bit of a sore knee. He wants to play. He's a tough competitor. Just the right size for a safety. He forces those runs in a hurry. Lost the five yards, second and 15 for Renzi. But Haynes to the left and to the right side is Williams. Looking, he throws the screen pass over the head of Bodie. Ramsey was trying to set up the screen pass, and Bodie had plenty of blocking convoy in front of him, but it was over his outstretched fingertips. And it stops the clock now with just four minutes and eight seconds to go on the game. And this little stall here is really costing LA's chances. Well, it is costing him, and the guy that really was effective. To, to make Ramsey throw it over the top was Alan Hughes playing at the defensive end. This is his first start in a long time. He had a broken hand earlier and was on the injured reserve. He's back in the game. He had moved into the screen and was blocking the vision and forced Ramsey to throw it high. Now Ramsey's work is really cut out. It's third and 15. Penalty markers go down all over the place. Ball start against Los Angeles. Will call off to express another five yards. It'll be third down and 20. I think it was Paul Alapua who had jumped across or moved just a little bit to set up quick. He's a good pass blocker, but he's having his problems this evening. Another rookie. He's a big guy, this Paul Alapua. Paul Alapua played at BYU. You know, they throw the ball 60 times a, a game up there. He ought to know a little something about pass blocking. 285 pounds. Michigan at the one yard line. It is called down by Michigan Clarence Chapman. And we're going for Brooks that time to Chris Haynes. And Chapman holds off another turnover here for the Panthers. So Michigan continues to command. They lead 34 17 with only four minutes to go. Ramsey going for broke here, has his eye on Chris Haynes at the goal line. Ramsey as he rolls to his right, he makes a cardinal mistake at that point. He throws it short to the inside. They beat Chapman down the right side earlier in the zone. That time, Chapman was sitting back there moving to the ball as you see him very happy on the sideline saying, Hi, Mom. Got his first one of the year. Well, Haynes, uh, really, the ball should have been laid up to the outside. Ramsey was short to the inside. Bear now back into his own end zone. Has a big lead though. Pitches it back to Williams. Trying to get out of the end zone. Drives it out to about the four or five yard line. John Williams. Just on a little power sweep. Getting out for some room at the very worst for their punter Herman Weaver. And sitting on a 34 to 17 lead as time clicks away now for Los Angeles. Three minutes, 40 seconds to go. Michigan has had a superb second half. L.A. led at the halftime, 17-13. Michigan owned the third period, 18 to nothing, and they've added another three points by Boyovich, who tied Tim Mazzetti's mark of four field goals in one game. 
second out and seven and look at this Aber out of the end zone and he's incomplete to Miller Aber boy like a riverboat gambler went back in his own end zone and when you got a 17 point lead I guess you can afford all that kind of thing well you can have some fun out there of course the play comes in from the sideline if you're the guy executing it the quarterback you're saying ooh I'm not so sure I want to be throwing for this end zone can't we run out the clock Cleo Miller right in his hands a bad spot as he was looking upfield to run with it before he had it caught because he did have plenty of running room could have got him out of a hole what's Bobby say to him when he comes back to huddle huh? doesn't have to he knows how he feels that's third down play and this time it is Williams to the left side Williams stopped short of the 10th that'll bring Weaver in and he'll have to clean it from the end zone David Apui a two was over there. He's another one of the Honolulu-born linemen for Los Angeles from Brigham Young. David up to 250 to go now, and here's Thunderfoot, who's averaged over 40 yards on two kicks tonight. On the season, he's averaging about 36.5. And now he'll try to hit a boomer. Coleman and Fox are waiting back deep for Los Angeles. Weaver's got it out of the end zone. Maybe kick and they just have maybe run back here. They got room. Over. Back to the 45 and a great tackle. Good open field tackle takes him down. LA gets the ball. They're trailing by 17 with less than two and a half to go. Coming for you on Monday, April 25th, live New Jersey and Herschel Walker against the Chicago Blitz of George Allen, right here on the ESPN with Jim Simpson and Paul McGuire. Join us here on the ESPN for that one. 34-17, uh, Michigan. LA's got the ball. Ramsey stays in there from the 45 of Michigan. Ramsey. Ramsey got a man open over here, and he hits Williams. Kevin Williams. A little whip it gets down the 34-yard line. Well, he picked up a few more yards to the inside, but frankly, at this stage, he'd have been better off if he'd have taken it to the outside and gotten out of bounds as the Express are lining up quickly. There's another quick play. Here goes the sideline pattern caught by Haynes, and he gets it out of bounds, stops the clock. Under the two-minute mark now, a minute and 54 seconds to go. 34-17 in favor of Michigan. Los Angeles, and this will be the two-minute warning here with 1.54 remaining. Tom Ramsey to see if he can pull off a miracle as team trailing by 17 points. Doesn't seem highly, but we'll be back to see in just a moment. And here's Happy... Mr. Bobby Bear, who is the most valuable player of tonight's game. Had an outstanding game, 15 out of 24 passes, 188 yards, two touchdowns. And boy, is he loving life here in the U.S. Football League after coming from Northwest Louisiana. Well, he certainly is. And, you know, you got to be happy for him because he's on a three-game winning streak at this stage. And they had some rocky times early in the season, but he's come on to prove his ability. Here's Ramsey trying to get something savage, and he hits Ellis over the middle, and he will score. Hollywood Ellis takes it all the way to score, 24 yards, a touchdown for Los Angeles. And the Express is not giving up yet. That's the fifth touchdown of the year for Ellis. He's the second leading scorer of the season for L.A. Well, as Ellis drops back, I mean, as uh, Ramsey drops back and hits Ellis, Ellis making a great move and then breaks away as he gives uh, John Arnold a little stiff, stiff arm at that point. Duke Clarence Chapman got six. And Vince Abbott just kicked through the 24th point. And what a high score game we have. That is 58 points, but it is Panthers and lead by 10. It's far 
far from being over yet. L.A.'s pullback within 10 points. The minute's 47 to go. An onside kick coming, maybe. Well, I would have to believe it's certainly going to be an onside kick. It's their only chance to get the football back quickly. They've tried two onside kicks in the previous ball games this season, neither of which have been successful. The Michigan Panther Club has what you call their hands team up there, essentially receivers, running backs, guys on the club that have the best hand. So when that ball starts squibbing and rolling around with a little bit of English on it, they want to be able to get people around it that are sure-handed. We'll see what happens. All right, ball's on the tee, and now here comes Abbott, and he scripts, well, it's got to go 10 yards. It does, and I think Michigan has it. All right, that was a good attempt on a pretty good kick by Abbott. Has to travel 10 yards to be a free ball, and it's recovered by Michigan. The only problem was it really didn't have quite enough velocity on it. Using his soccer style, he kicked it with his left foot, but the ball is rolling relatively slowly, so the people on that side have to wait for it to cover the 10 yards. Usually you have a player in that area where the ball is going in the direction of the man that's going to recover it. The first offensive man coming down with the kicking team will try and blast him, and the next guy get it. Couldn't do it. The ball was moving too slow. Los Angeles has all three timeouts remaining. Michigan ball, first and 10 at the LA 45. They give it to Williams. Williams has good opening inside the 40-yard line. Picks up six yards on the play. That keeps the clock rolling at 136. LA is not going to spin one of his timeouts right here. There's Bobby A. Bear, our Budweiser player of the game. 15 out of 25, 188 yards, two touchdowns, had two picked off. And uh, was generally outstanding, especially in the third quarter when he took Michigan in to score three times. Well, he sure matured this year in that playing time as he's managed to learn how to look at defense and then come from one receiver to another or dump it off to a back. Time now running out for L.A. They'll keep it on the ground. Williams running wide. He'll try to stay in bounds. L.A. gets him out of bounds. It's a first down. Stops the clock. But Michigan gets a first down with 58 seconds to go. And it would seem now an impossible task for Los Angeles to get the 10 points they need. 34-24, one of the highest scoring games of the year in the U.S. Football League. And happiness on the sidelines. Jim Stanley smiling. He knows he's in control at that point. Hugh Campbell, ever the gentleman on the far side, his wife Louise and four children out on the West Coast, three daughters and a son. They're not happy with it, but the fortunes of war is Al Krupbaum, and the owner was there with Stanley. Here's Williams carrying for the third straight time to the 30. That keeps the clock rolling. 50 seconds to go. Here's what's coming up tomorrow. Boston, Philadelphia, Oakland, Birmingham, Tampa Bay and Washington. Then on Monday, our big game here on ESPN. New Jersey with Herschel Walker versus the Chicago Blitz. From Chicago with Jim Sips and Paul McGuire. So join us here on ESPN for that one. See if Herschel Walker can take away the rushing free lead from uh, Kelvin Bryant. Well, I think I just should correct myself as the play was getting ready to go into action on the sideline there with Jim Stanley. It's Al Kaufman, who is the owner, and I kind of mispronounced his name at that point. Stumbled over happy. a little bit, but he doesn't care what they call him. His club on a roll. Uh, he's happy. Well, uh, this is going to get Michigan in the Central Division now. They'll pull within a half game of the Chicago Blitz, so that'll be a big game on Monday night. Chicago will have to win and stay ahead of them. And look at that Pacific Division. Los Angeles will drop to 4-4. Four and four. Denver is tied at the half of their game tonight at Arizona. So if Arizona should win that one, that'd be three teams at 4-4 four and four with Oakland to play tomorrow. And this game, L.A. scored first on a field goal by Abbott. Then uh, Aber hit Carter for a touchdown. Bodie then scored to put L.A. back ahead for the last time. Then uh, Bojovic kicked two field goals. And Lay hit Haynes to put L.A. on that lead at the half. The rest of the game has belonged to Michigan. They scored 18 points in the third period. And off to Williams again. To the 23. 35 seconds to go. Los Angeles uses one of its three remaining timeouts. And again, a good 
job by Williams, getting good blocking with the offensive line. Once more, the trap working effectively for the second week in a row. He turns up to the inside with it. One tackle was missed. You say it's a missed tackle. Give Williams a little credit that he broke the tackle. He's a compact type runner. He cut back to the inside, got a few extra yards. This may be the last play of the game here. Michigan winning his fourth game, a third in a row. Six seconds to go. Bear. MVP will just stop on it here at the 36, and there it is. The ball game is over at the Silver Dome in Pontiac. Michigan with a tremendous second half. The final score, Michigan 34, Los Angeles 24. We'll be back. The strength continues here for the Michigan Panthers of Jim Stanley. They won their third in a row. Four field goals by Novo Bojovic, which ties the USFL record, and a big game for Bobby Aver. What do you think about it, Don? Well, Jim Stanley's club executed well both ways. Offensively, they moved the football on the ground. They moved it in the air. They kept them off balance with a great selection of plays. Defensively, they were extremely aggressive. They got after them. They caused a couple crucial turnovers in that big third quarter like you mentioned, Corker's big recovery was a key factor to keep this fire alive and hot. Well, big defensive play, Keaton in the first half, and it's in the third quarter. There's the final score, 34-24. This is Jim Packer for Don Heinrich saying so long from Pontiac, and now back to Tommy. Thanks very much, Jim. The L.A. Express and the Michigan Panthers now saddled with the same record after eight weeks of this USFL season. Each team at 4-4 four and four, with the Michigan Panthers trailing at halftime 17-13 to 13 behind their quarterback and the Budweiser player of the game, quarterback Bobby Hebert. They come out with a 34-24 to 24 victory. Now let's take a look at the remainder of this weekend's schedule in the United States Football League. Week number eight, we have three games on tap tomorrow. The big one, Boston at Philadelphia. The uh, leader here, the winner here, will emerge the leader in the Atlantic Division. Philly is favored by six and a half. Tampa Bay at Washington. The Bandits on the road are four-point favorites without John Reeves in the lineup. Oakland at Birmingham. The Invaders favored by two and a half. And Monday night on ESPN, New Jersey. With Herschel Walker invade Chicago, the Blitz, though, are a big eight-point favorite at home. And that will be our Monday night special, 9 Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, Daylight time. Herschel Walker and the New Jersey Generals against the Chicago Blitz. Coached by George Allen. That game comes to you from Soldier Field, Chicago. Next Saturday night live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific Daylight Time. The rematch between Philadelphia and Tampa Bay. This time from Tampa Stadium. We'll have it all for you beginning at, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time next Saturday night. The USFL on ESPN has been brought to you by Apple Computers. There are more people in more places doing more things with Apple computers than with any other personal computer. The final score once again from the Pontiac Silverdome, the Michigan Panthers 34, the Los Angeles Express 24.